to the stream. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to be working on Remake and I'm pretty excited about a lot of the progress I've made recently. Um, and I can't wait to show it to you guys too. Uh, it's going to be some pretty exciting stuff. Um, hi Sullivan, nice to have you here. How's, uh, how's it going? Uh, let's see. So, is is my audio okay? Because I have a I have a fan like blowing right at me. I, I hope it's not affecting it at all. Hey, skinny seahorse, welcome to the chat. How's it going? Um, so let's see. I just want to post one place before I start this uh, live streaming a web app framework. Um, let's see. Going good, got your first pair of glasses today after like 14 years. Wow, that's awesome. So you weren't like wearing contacts before that? Um, that must feel like a, being a totally different person. That's awesome. Da, da, da. Okay, close that. Um, and I'm going to just post, oops, one other place. Uh, hey all, I am live streaming. Okay, cool, that's good. Close that. I think I've posted everywhere. Okay. Hey, Tamesa, how's it going? Uh, how's it, how are, how are you doing today? Um, it's going pretty well. I, uh, yeah, I worked a lot on, on Remake this week, so I'm excited to kind of continue going from there. Hey, Android, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the, welcome to the chat. What are you up to today? What, what are, Tamesa, what are you up to? Android, what are you up to? Um, Sullivan says they were told that the vision center in their uh, in her brain. Oh, you had a ski accident. Oh, a memory loss. Jeez. Wow. That's awesome. Oh yeah, Tamesa, you have that yeah coding interview coming up real soon. Uh, React Native. Um, and Android is feeling a little bit better now. Awesome. Um, well, are you? You're still taking it pretty easy today, I imagine, Android. And uh, to Mesa, good luck with that interview. Sounds like it's going to be um, a little bit hard, but I'm sure you'll do you'll do really well. Um, nice. Okay, so first things first. Let's see. Close this. <coughs> so, oh, Android, happy birthday. You deserve a shout out. Uh, I'm very advanced with my copy and paste. Uh, ice cream codes, it's been a little while. Welcome to the chat. Um, okay, so this is what I'm planning on working on today. Um, I have a new NPM package, so I want to test it out. Uh, and I'm excited to show you guys uh, th what that's about. Um, oh, cool. Nice. Um, have you... What kind of stuff have you been, been working on? Um, okay, so I have a new NPM package. I'm excited about that. I'm going to improve the to do's app that I have currently, and then I'm going to do like some cleanup stuff. But first things first, I'm going to show off the new NPM package. Uh, <coughs> okay, working on some new features. Um, I forget, I think you're mostly back end. But I forget. 
Yeah, I did. I got the npm package. So if you go, if you go right now to npmjs.com slash package slash remake, this is the remake package. Um, and it has, you know, the same description and everything, but now it's a different way to get started with it. And I actually, over the past few days, I made a, a command line tool. Yeah, yeah, the story is really good. So I reached out to the guy. Um, he was super nice, like just this really great person. And I was like, hey, can I use your, uh, can I take, like, can I have your name basically? Because I've been working on this package. I want to I wanna have the remake name. Um, but like, you know, if you can't do it, that's fine. And he's like, well, I actually, um, you know, I use this for some of my projects and, you know, they're dependent on it. So I really don't want to let it go. But, you know, thanks for asking. And, you know, maybe we can work together in the future or something. So I was really sad. So I reached out to him again and I was like, maybe I could pay you for it. Would you be open to me, you know, paying you a little bit of money for it? And, uh, and I wasn't expecting to hear back from him because he seemed pretty adamant he wasn't going to give me the package. Um, <clears throat> but I waited like five days. And at that point, I was like, there's no way he's going to respond. But he responded and he said, how much? Like, how much you, would you be willing to pay for the package name for a remake? And I was like, well, OK, maybe I'd pay you like a couple hundred dollars. But even that's kind of pretty high for me. Um, I just would really, really, really like the name. Uh, so yeah, if, if that's what it takes to like pay you for your time for like transitioning your project off of there, I would be willing to, to pay you like a hundred or two hundred dollars. And I actually said two hundred dollars. I'm like embarrassed about how much I was going to offer. But, um, but he responded and, uh, he was like, there's, you, you can just have it since you're like so passionate about this project that you're willing to pay uh, $200 for it. I'm going to just give it to you. And so uh, he just gave me the remake package. It was so, so awesome. And this is the guy right here. Uh, if you want to follow him, he goes by it's John Q on a lot of social media. Yeah, it was super, it was super awesome, super exciting. So now I have it. It says do not use yet, but it's pretty much ready to go. Um, <clears throat> I just have to do a few things to, uh, to change the, to, uh, like get it ready but uh, I can show you how it works so instead so since we transitioned from having it be a front-end package like a front-end library to a full stack package I decided to start with like a project generator so now if you go to like a directory and you have this installed you can say remake create and then the name of your project uh, I think I, I've already I already have like project some projects in here. So I'll just say project one, two, three. And if I do that, it'll say creating new project. That's copying over the files. Then it's installing the NPM dependencies. And it'll show the output from that in like a second. Um, I should probably have like a loading spinner or something here. Uh, yeah, da, da, da. Okay, there we go. And then uh, it installs the NPM and then it sets up your variables and folder file. And then you can go right into the project project one, two, three. You can do npm run dev as the second step right here. And then you can load the project in a browser. And so now, um, uh, let's see. Yep, now we have the project running. <laughs> Great story. <laughs> The, the one the story about getting the name yeah it was pretty it was super exciting um, I was like literally not expecting him to respond or anything and I think I thought it was gonna be like two hundred dollars how about a thousand dollars but yeah yeah I um I so, so I saw the room but I haven't seen the new one the docu the not documentary but like the reenactment of it have you seen that I really want to watch that um, it looks wicked fun. The one with uh, the James Franco and uh, Seth Rogen. That looks fun. So yeah, so now you have an app running and all it took was you running a few commands. There's just uh, remake create and then you know changing directory into the project and then npm run dev and boom you're, you're started just like that with a full stack framework. So instead of like 
cloning the repository and doing all that technical stuff, you can just install an npm package and then get it running in, you know, like three commands total. Um, pretty simple commands. So I'm excited about that. I'm super excited about that. Uh, so let's mark this as done. So test the new npm package. So I'm going to uninstall the, the um, local version. Now I think I have to use the G flag for this because I installed it globally. Um, oh. Yeah, I think, that, I think that'll do it. And then we're going to install it <coughs> um, globally from NPM. Okay, and now let's try it out. So this is the same thing we just did. We're just testing if, I don't know how this could, you know, be a problem, but uh, run into weirder things. So let's just try creating it. Yeah, it looks like it's doing exactly the same thing, which is exactly what you'd expect because it's exactly the same code. I guess the uh, it could maybe have a hiccup if maybe like my npm ignore uh, file had some like weird thing in it that was preventing something from getting up there. Um, but we'll do this. We'll do into, go into project 2, npm run dev, and then uh, refresh this right here. Nice, and we got the to do's app, and let's just make sure that it's working. Um, oh man, are you? Oh, no way. Solvent, oh geez, that's so nice. Thank you so much, that's, that's super exciting. Oh. That's so nice. Um, geez. Okay, so I'm gonna sign up here and create some to-dos, and I'm gonna edit one of the to-dos, and if I, if I refresh the page, boom, it's all working. So one thing that's kinda cool is I also like redid the entire structure for all of these projects. So if we just look in here in the project directory, You'll see there's like some weird things that you might not know what they are, like cache, underscore remake, underscore remake data. But pretty much everything you need to know about is in project files. And that has the assets, the layouts, the pages, and the partials. And the pages and the partials and the layout is really where the templating comes in. And it just makes it super, super easy to like put together a basic app. And then you have the remake data, which is kind of cool because instead of using a Mongo database, I'm using a flat file like JSON files for storing all the data. And you can see I have user app data and user details. User details is like their login information. So you can have my like log, my password hash right here. And then the app data right here, this is just the app data that you're using on the app. And it has to-do lists with three items. Each has a unique ID. And then the top level object has an ID too. <coughs> um, and that's automatically generated for you. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I really like how it's reorganized. I think it's still about um, like 500% harder to get started with than I would like it to be. Like I would prefer that it that like this cache <laughs> directory isn't there. I would prefer that like pretty much everything in project files. I'd be fine if this was the top level. You know, like get attributes, get ignore, package lock. I don't want any of that there. But then you have to think about, okay, what if someone wants to install their own NPM package or just, you know, have control over their own, you know, um, web, web application, right? The back end and stuff. So I feel like this is kind of a good compromise for now. And then maybe in the future, <coughs> I'll kind of lock it down a little bit. Um, just, and it's not like lock it down to like make it less accessible. Like I always want people to be able to use the full version, but just for people getting started with it, I feel like, you know, if, if the only folders are like assets, layouts, pages, and partials, that's like basic enough that someone who knows HTML might be able to learn about those concepts and then get started with it. But even that's a lot to ask, right? Because assets, you know, if you just know HTML, maybe you kind of know what assets are, but layouts, you know, you'd have to have used a templating language in order to understand that. And then pages, that, that gets more into like the um, static site generator territory or 
you know, web app territory. So it's even just in them partials, right? That's the same thing, right? If you've used a static site generator or something, you're going to know what that is. So I feel like, yeah, maybe it's kind of the base level you have to be at right now is you kind of have to understand what a static site generator does or what a basic web app, how a basic web app is going to be organized. Okay, but anyways, we tested the new NPM package. That's working. We're just flying through these to do's. Now we're going to improve the to-dos app. So this is a much longer project. So let's go into my main folder for this. So we're going to go into the remake uh, framework. And we're going to run dev. And this is kind of like the master folder for like the remake example app. Um, and let's remove this uh, project two from there. So now if we start this up, refresh, you see we have a few more to do's here. Let's remove a couple of the, oh, I can't. Huh. Oh, it's because I'm not logged in. Okay. David, I think I signed up using this password. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to remove these. Okay, so we want to style this and yeah, do all kinds of stuff. So let's, um, let's get started with this. I guess, yeah, I'm okay with these like kind of basic looking buttons. They're a little basic, but whatever. Uh, so let's go into, we'll go into pages, we'll go into the index, and then we have this to-do list. Okay, so for the index, um, I guess, yeah, let's, let's kind of, um, Let's like describe how we're gonna change this first. So the first thing I wanna do is like add, uh, we'll say like styles, and we're gonna say like add um, like a to-do list style, uh, and then also uh, HBS is handlebars. Um, I switched from nunchucks to handlebars uh, because handlebars is about like 10,000 times more popular than nunchucks. So it's um it's like pretty much just like HTML uh, except you can have you can like have loops and you can have um, you can like include partials right so this is the syntax for including a partial this is the syntax for passing data into a partial um, so it's pretty it's pretty basic and it's also really widely used uh, handlebars is so we're gonna style the to do list we're gonna also add like a page container. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a much better place to start too because people who like I want this framework to be really easy for people to get started with who just know HTML and I feel like they're more likely to know handlebars than any other templating language that that I can use on Node.js. Pretty sure it's like the most uh, popular one. Okay, so let's add a page container. I'm gonna go into my SAS file and um, none of these really cover page container. I, maybe base, but no, I think this is just like the base reset. So let's go, let's create another helper. I guess I'll call them helpers, <laughs> even though this is more like a component or like a, I don't know, it's not, or like a partial, but whatever, we'll just put it in the helpers directory for now. And let's call this, um, uh, I guess we'll just do page container, right? That's fine. And then let's include that up here. And let's kind of separate these out. So like this is like the basic stuff. Um, say like uh, base, I don't know what else to call it. We'll say like, um, basic components, um, so pages, and then this will go, hey, Bloodluster, how's it going? Um, I'm curious, is that, is your name from uh, a game or something? Because I know I play a game a lot that, uh, that has a, an ability called blood Bloodlust in it, and I'm just curious. <laughs> if you also play that game. 
Okay, so we'll include page container here, and then let's go into our index, and we're just gonna wrap, I think this, yeah, we'll just have a class here that says page container. Um, I don't even know if it makes sense to have a separate SAS file for this, probably not, but whatever. So we'll have page container, and we're gonna say max width, and we'll give it like 900 pixels, because this isn't like, like, we could even give it 600 pixels, to be honest. It's not like a huge app. We just, you know. And I think this is all we're going to do with it. Actually, wait, let's see. So, I, f I feel like I had a had some padding here. Um, padding 1. 1. 1.5. In, in base, so over the body. Okay, so I have padding 1. Point, okay, so that's already kind of taken care of. Okay, so let's do that. And so now when we refresh, oh yeah, so it has a max width of 600 pixels, but it doesn't have a margin. Um, so let's put that underneath. And let's say zero and auto. And refresh. Um, okay, boom, so now we move to the middle. Now unfortunately this button is, uh, is outside. Uh, there's no reason it's outside of this. So we could just as easily move it in there. Okay, let's uh, refresh. Okay, boom, now it's centered. Now for our page container, I think we, we want a little padding or margin on the top. We could add some margin to this top area, but I feel like it's better on this component. So let's add some padding uh, here, and we're just gonna add um, maybe like two rem and then zero on the left and right. So let's do that and refresh. Okay, that's looking a little bit nicer. <coughs> okay, so now let's, um, now we want to do, we want to style our to-do list. So in here we have our to-do list, but we don't have a class on this. So let's say class and say to-do list. And let's create another helper, which is really a component, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we're going to do to do list.sass and our main.sass. Uh, we're not going to alphabetize these for now. Oh man, I guess we are. <laughs> we're going to alphabetize. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, and then to do list. To do dash list. Great. And now we're going to have to do dash list and then. Um, what are we going to say? We're going to say uh, we definitely want it to have margin bottom so that they have spaces between each other. Um, I guess we could just have it have a background color instead of having it have a border. So we'll say background color. Uh, let's just try CCC for now. Um, yeah, let's see what this does. Okay, so here, oh, there we go. Okay, so it looks horrible. <laughs> it gives a little bit more spacing here, which is good, but um, <clears throat> in general, it kind of looks horrible. So let's, um, let's see. I feel like I was using some kind of color scheme for this. Uh, site nav, and then this. So the normal color scheme I, I go for is open color because it just simplifies everything. Yep, okay, I am using this. Okay, perfect. So let's go for, what do we want our to-do list items to be colored as? Uh, I'm open to feedback. I feel like each to-do list could have this color. I don't know, I usually like reserving green for like success messages but whatever, this is kind of just like a fun little thing, right? Okay, boom, got that. Okay, so let's add a border radius. Um, we'll say like 3px, let's keep it pretty light. And let's add some padding to this too. Uh, top is gonna be maybe like 0.5 rem, and then to the sides, maybe one rem. So that's like eight pixels and 16 pixels. Maybe 0.75 on the sides. Um, okay, let's try that. 
Oh yeah, we also need to... Yeah, that's not big enough. Um, yeah, we should make it the same size as the buttons. So let's look at the button styles. We have padding like this. Okay, yeah. To match the button, I think it's good. And then we'll also do uh, color. So we'll do color of white. And... I don't know. It's looking pretty button-like, huh? I don't really like that. Um, oops. Uh, let's refresh this. Um, no, it's looking very button-like. So this is like a to-do list. So you should be able to go in here and edit a list of to-dos. Okay, let's see. So... Um, let's... Uh, See what this the height of this is. I just like to be, I don't know, a little exact sometimes. Height 36. Okay, so let's um, go down to 36. And we're going to have uh, add to do list. Um, And we're going to go down to 16 pixels, and it's going to be regular. And I forgot the exact spacing on this. But it's somewhere like that. I think that's pretty much what it is. Okay, and we're going to round this. So do that. And now we need to uh, grab the background color from this. <clears throat> um, and if you're wondering why am I doing this in Sketch and not just in the browser, it's because I'm really pretty bad at, uh, at designing in the browser. I know a lot of people are pretty good at it, but um, I am not. Okay, so let's brainstorm like what these to-dos are going to look like, or these to-do lists. So I kind of like maybe just having like a simple border. And not rounded because that makes it look too much like a, a button. Um, and let's try like a lighter border around there. And what what is like a to-do list? What would that be called? Be called maybe like personal to-dos, something like that. And then we set the minimum width to 600, so we're going to go all the way up to 600. We could actually make this come down a little bit, maybe to like 4, 400, 480. I feel like 480 is a decent size for this kind of to-do. Um, this could be a little bit bigger, actually. Maybe like 42. Okay, and maybe we add an icon. <laughs> I really don't like that idea because this is like the starter project that people are going to get. Um, oh, I could use an emoji, right? Uh, let's see. So, um, note. Yeah, something like that, or that, or that. This one's a pretty good one. So, let's go in here and insert that. Um, of course, this won't work cross-platform. I think people on Windows suffer from really bad emoji support. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe not that. Okay. Oh, and we should have a heading. So we'll say, like, to-do lists. And we'll go up to, like, 21. And we'll do, like, bold. And we'll align this to the left. Okay, this isn't bad. This is not looking bad. And why don't we align this to the right and then add a couple more to-do lists. I mean, it's very simple, right? <laughs> I say it's like not looking bad, but it's pretty simple. Where did you guys go? You guys just aren't talking, huh? No talk? I feel like maybe I ruined the, <laughs> the conversation at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are just working on stuff. Um, Android, tell us a story or something. I don't know. You don't have to. It's no pressure. I'll just, I'll just work. 
It's, it's good. It's good. I'm focused. <laughs> um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, okay, so what's another to-do list I could have? Maybe like weekly recipes? That's a good one. Ooh, you got a raspberry pie today. That's a, that's exciting. And Salvin is intensely focused on making your celery workers run popularly on local. 60,000 users to update, and there's no way you're running that in sync. I don't know what half of that means, but it sounds hard. It sounds like a lot. Um, okay, so we'll do, I don't know about weekly recipes. We'll have personal to-dos, and then we'll have like work to-dos, and then we'll have like vacation to-dos, I guess. Um, the Raspberry Pi doesn't work. Seems to be the SD card, but the community isn't sure. <laughs> so yeah, great birthday present. Oh, that stinks. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, that sucks. Can you use it without an SD card? Um, okay, and we'll have long-term to-dos. And then maybe some more spacing there, and down here. 24. I love 24. Nope, it doesn't work there. Um, this needs to be a little bit bigger. Maybe 24 itself. Uh, what is this? For some reason that doesn't work. I don't know why that looks off. That looks better. Let's see. There. That's not too bad. Okay, cool. Um, oh, it doesn't boot or show the display. That stinks. Um, hmm. But you don't know it's this SD card. It could. Um, have you tried turning it on and on and off again? Uh, Sullivan says celery is a job queue. You just split the data so it can update asynchronously and provide user feedback so they can see the progress of the update on the front end. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, sorry, Android. I don't really, I've never used a Raspberry Pi. I, I um, played about around with a robotics when I was in high school, but I don't really, I wouldn't really know how to help you at this point. So... Sorry. It could be, you know what, what often happened, and I, I might be wrong about this, but I think if you, if you so, so the components could be a little fragile, especially if they're exposed to like magnets or electricity or something. Um, so if you have any like spare, spare capacitors or, I don't know, chips lying around, maybe you could try replacing them. I know there's like ways you can test each component by like, seeing if power is going through it, right? So like if you have one of those things, you can like test one side and test the other side to check the voltage or something. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much beyond that. I, re I remember that capacitors used to be the problem that I would run into. I don't even know if that's true, but that's what the person who was teaching me to told me. Like I think I kept blowing capacitors because, um, you know, we'd, we'd hook it up to power and I had the chips not not correctly configured, so it would like blow the capacitors and then we'd have to replace them. Um, the LED pattern tells it's missing an SD it's missing a file or SD card that can't be read. Oh. Well, maybe you could reboot the SD card. like maybe you can plug it into your computer and like wipe it, format it, and then load up whatever it's supposed to have on it you know, from a, from downloading it from the Raspberry Pi website. If that's a possibility, that might be good. Oh, you tried that 10 times. Okay, well, I feel good about, like, saying things that you're trying. Uh, that sucks. But wait, I mean, if you've tried that, the SD card is probably working, right? Because you've been able to hook it up to your computer, right? So, right? Yeah, so it's not the it's probably not the SD card. Maybe it's um, um 
I don't know. Did you see uh, Good Omens? <laughs> That's a funny show. Wait, it didn't ship with an SD card? Yeah, it's so good, right? You remember how the Antichrist was like really bad? Or was it the Antichrist? No, it was the other guy. It was the, the bumbling guy who was really bad around computers. Like every time he touched a computer, it totally broke. It could be that. Android could be one of those people. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Um, well, I don't know. I think that's probably the issue, though. Maybe it's not compatible with the SD card that you bought, you know? You probably didn't buy it from one of their recommended resellers, so that's probably like... I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. It should work with anything, I would think. It's weird. Okay, so I kind of like this layout. Maybe... Well, this text is a little bit bolder in real life. Uh, da, da, da. One, two. One, two. Okay, yeah, this is not bad. Yeah, it should work with the... Yeah, totally. I don't know. But you never know these days with, like, manufacturers. They, like... They install, like, weird stuff on, like, SD cards or whatever by default where they'll just, like, put in, like, this hidden folder that does, like, some weird security thing or whatever. I don't know. I've seen that sometimes where, like, you get a new, you know, like, uh, thumb drive and it's got, like, stuff loaded up on it. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> so, I don't know. It could be that, like, maybe it's formatted incorrectly or made to use, like, made to be used with computers or cameras only, or I don't know, has some kind of special thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That sounds like a pain. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. But luckily, SD cards aren't that expensive these days, so maybe you could just like hop on their recommended SD card list and try that. Um, okay, so this is the to-do list. And then we're also going to have... Uh, a to-dos page. So we need to differentiate these because you don't want to be on the to-dos page and think that you're working with a to-do list. Oh, there's no list? I bet there's a list. Um, Raspberry Pi recommended SD card. Uh, okay, so they have this page, but they don't, they don't have like a recommended one, like officially. Well, you could just, I don't know. I mean, this probably isn't the issue, to be honest. You're probably going to like, I don't know, buy another SD card and that's not going to work either. Um, but maybe something from this list. It should be a class 10. Maybe you don't have a class 10 micro SD card. Um, wow. Is SanDisk <laughs> like promoting or sponsoring this page or what? SanDisk, 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 SanDisk. You got the first one? That's the best overall. I don't think that's your problem. I think it's probably that um, you uh, have a subtle electronic charge running through you because you spend so much time on the computer. That's probably why. So you probably like are frying the Raspberry Pi every time you're near it. That's my guess, at least. That's my debugging work. Um, did you know that there's some people <coughs> who um, who want to develop new senses? You know, like you know how we have five senses. They want to develop like new senses and become like 
you know, Androids basically. And so they'll install, they'll like add like tiny little metal filings to their fingertips, like embedded in their fingertips. And that makes it so that they can detect uh, like magnetic waves or like magnetic um, currents, you know, like in the, in the air. And this one guy, he said he was like walking across the street and he like felt like a really strong pull in his fingertips. And, it, and he like asked around about it and it turns out that there was like a giant generator under the street, like right there. So he pretty much like was able to see something that no one else was able to see. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so for the to-dos, we're gonna need to be able to check them off. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna use a regular checkbox for that. And then we're gonna have the to do. Okay, so let's try this. And this is gonna be like get milk or whatever. Or get get bread from the store. Okay, and then 18 pixels here. But we need to make it look different than the list. Um, oh wait, and I do want, let's see, I have something here. Design assets, here we go. Uh, yeah. I think this is what I want. Cursors, here, checkbox. Okay, paste this. And put that in there. Center, center. Um, that's funny. Yeah, I used to like go over my cousin's house and he had like this awesome computer. And like, after I was gone, he would like get a virus on it and then he would blame it on me. It was so, so crappy. I think I did actually end up giving him, giving his computer a virus like once. But I think most of the, I think after that he just blamed it on me, even though he was like installing pirated games and stuff. Like I don't think it was my fault after that first time, but that stunk. Okay, so we're going to have the to-dos look like this. No, I don't like gray. Let's see. Um, ooh, that's good. Maybe have it like a subtle red if it's not done yet. Something like that. No, I don't know. This doesn't look great. I am a terrible designer. I don't know what I'm doing. What could it be? It could be... Oh geez, um, light orange, light yellow. Let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. Well, let's see, maybe. No, it has to be the same. Maybe we just have it all the same, like that. Um, maybe this is a little bit darker. Uh, maybe the other way around. Let's see. So this will be the light one, and this will be the darker one. Um, no, I don't know. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. I like it. I like the idea, the basic idea. You think dark, dark on the, on the left? 
I think it looks a little too complicated for just like a single to do. Let's try it. Let's try it again. So here, and then like that. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not bad. Okay. Let's let's try it. So here. I mean, this isn't like, you know, an app we're going to like sell to people. Um, it's just going to be like the starting app. Okay, so get bread from the store. Um, call James. Uh, go to the arcade. Oops. 14. Hey, JD Hirsch, how's it going? We are designing a to-do app right now. Um, okay, this looks not too bad. I actually like that. Uh, maybe this should be blue, though. What do you think about that? Just to match the, the blue of the checkbox? Like, uh, like that? No, that doesn't look good. I'm a terrible designer. My instincts are, are awful. Uh, lurking and working. Awesome. That's, you're just like most of us, so you're, you're in good company. Um, okay, cool. And you know what? Let's add like a gradient background or like a pattern background. CSS. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right about that too. Um, yeah, I think you're right. <clears throat> okay, so these are cool. Right here. We want like a subtle one now. Ooh, this, this is nice. So let's like take a screenshot of this. Uh, like that. And we're gonna show in Finder just to see how how it looks. Oh wait, I have to go into my Dropbox. I don't want to go into my Dropbox on stream. Okay. Secrets. Not that there's anything in here. It's pretty boring to be honest. I say that, but you guys can't see it, so you will never know if I'm telling the truth. Yeah, Layer Rue is pretty cool. Um, I haven't, like, heard of anything she's doing recently, though. Okay, so... Unfortunately, I didn't make this big enough, so I have to copy it. Okay, there we go. And let's, um... Group the, or wait, no, we want to ungroup, or, yeah, group these, and then we're going to create a mask here, and then we're going to put uh, these on top, okay, and then we're going to go in here, we're going to grab this, oh, huh? What happened? Let's do this. Okay, so that's how it would look. I don't like it. It's awful. <laughs> um, okay, let's undo all that. Undo, undo, undo. It was a bad idea. Okay, let's see. Um, is there like a subtle thing we could have, like just like a subtle pattern. These are nice. Um, like this isn't, this isn't bad. So let's do like foreground color and we'll do like FA, FA, FA and background color is going to be FFF. So it's very subtle, <laughs> maybe too subtle. Okay, what is, um, I don't know, maybe we could go up to E. Yeah, that's fine. Oops, screenshot of the whole page. Um, let's, uh, oh, here we go. Nice, they give us the CSS right here. So we can just test it out by going to our to-do's app. Oh no. Oh yeah, I guess we can just test it out here. Maybe. 
Oh no. <laughs> I just scrolled on this font size thing. Uh, okay, whatever. So to do list. I'm going to paste this in. Um, would that look okay, do you think? I don't know about that. I mean, the let's get rid of the color. Maybe it needs to be even... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that works for the pattern. And also, we need to make it a little darker, I think. Color dial. Let's go with E, 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 E. Let's make it a little bit uh, blue. One, two. Okay, a little bit blue and a little bit darker. A little bit more blue. Okay, there we go. Foreground color is going to be a tiny bit blue, but mostly gray. Okay, and we're looking for a background for a to-do list. And it can be fun. We could do bubbles. I'm, I'd be okay with that. Or like waves. But I guess it'd be nicer if it was like... If it kind of looked like it was like a to-do list thing. I don't know how to make it look like it's a to-do list though. Um, that's not bad. I don't know. I always like. I feel like background patterns are kind of a little tacky when I when I actually try to use them. But this is like a, such a cool resource. Okay, let's try this one. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna undo those. Paste that in. That's not too bad. I actually, I kind of appreciate that, you know? Maybe we could even make it a little bit darker. Um, so like a little bit bluer and a tiny bit darker. And foreground color. Close, copy. Oops, there we go. Um, I don't know. We'll, tr we'll try it. Okay, so we've got these to dos. We got the we we've got the to do lists. Uh, I have checked out Cooler. I I like it a lot. Um, it's a uh, it's a little bit harder to use than a desktop app. Uh, for me, so I tend to just default back to a desktop app, and this is the best one I've found, Color Dial. Um, it just lets me like quickly modify the hue, the saturation, and the um, whatever you call this, <laughs> um, and then darken or lighten things. So I use it just for like quick kind of you know color matching and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I have used Cooler, and I think it's a, a really cool app. Okay, so 20, 20. Let's move these down a little bit. Okay, nice. Okay, so now time to get these styles working. So we're gonna go, uh, we'll refresh this. <laughs> Look how horrible this looks. Um, oh wait, we need the ability to edit. So here it's fine, because we have two different edit controls, but here we need the ability to edit the name of the to-do list. So I think over here, we're just gonna have a little like edit button and it's we'll make it uh, semi-bold, 14 and grayish and we'll underline it. Uh, where's underline? In there. Yeah, I kind of like this. Um, and what do we say, 18 pixels? Okay. 13, 13, and 13, 13. Uh, and let's move this a little bit more to the right. Okay, nice. So now we have the ability to edit the, these. Because um, when we click on them, we want the default to be to see the to-dos. So we have to have a separate button for editing them. Okay, so <clears throat> we're done with these styles, I think. Uh, let's go into our code 
and we have to-do lists, and then we're going to have uh, underscore underscore item. And we could say list item, but we'll just say item. So that's going to be the to-do list item. And we're going to have the main text and then the button text. <coughs> okay, so inside to-do list, we're going to have span for the name. And then uh, we're going to have a link over here. And we can just set that to a hash for now. And we're going to have, let's say, edit. Um, OK. Do, do, do. And we'll say class uh, to-do list. Uh, edit button. Or we'll just say edit. That's fine. That's pretty clear. Um, and I don't think we'll need anything for this. I don't think we'll need a class on this. I think it can just stay a span. <coughs> um, to do list. Oh, this should be a to do. This should be a to do list item, and then this should have to do list. Okay, nice. So uh, there we go. And to do list uh, margin bottom. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, okay, so let's uh, figure this out. So the padding is going to be 11, 12, and 18. So we'll say, um, wait, yeah, 11, 12, um, Wait, what did I just say? Okay, so 11 on the top, 16 on the right, okay. Um, bottom is 12, and left is 18. Okay, cool. We're also going to have this be display flex, I think. <laughs> and then we're gonna have this uh, edit button down here. So we need to align that to the right, which means since it's flexbox, we're going to say margin left auto. Margin bottom one, is that really what we want? 14 pixels. So let's say, let's just make it exp explicit. The color of the text is going to be uh, this. The background color, we're not going to worry about that yet. And we're going to have a border. So we're going to say border. 1px solid, um, and we're going to do this for the border color. And we're not going to have a border radius. OK, let's see what that looks like so far. Um, yeah, kind of close. You can click on that, unfortunately. So let's move that. So editable is going to be moved down here. And have the class the href, and this. <coughs> OK. And now we need to style the edit button. So I believe we have yeah text decoration underline already. So we're, uh, we want to have like a hover to say text decoration none. So when it's hovered, it's not going to have a text decoration. And then the color is going to be this. So I have color uh, light gray, or yeah, pretty light. Well, it's a little dark. And then we're going to have it all caps. So we're going to do text transform and uppercase. OK, nice. Let's try that. Oh, wait, no, there's one more thing. We want font size. Ooh, hallelujah. I have async working finally. You have to start this other service called RabbitMQ. Nice, you have rabbits and celery. That's awesome. Yeah, I've heard of RabbitMQ. And I think I did hear about celery back when I first started. But that's awesome. Congratulations. 
what can I ask? What is like the job? What is the thing the user has to do in, in order to start this job? Oh, nice. <laughs> Pay attention. Okay, so we have this to do list that we're building. And you should be able to go into this to do list. So we want to make this look clickable. Uh, you can feel free to comment on the design if you want, Sullivan. This is our final design. They're activating a contract which attaches subscriptions to users for the school, school board, library. Oh, okay. So you're like going through all of the users and attaching the subscription asynchronously. That's awesome. Yeah, so this is our amazing design for the to-do lists and the uh, to-dos. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, okay, so now this looks clickable. I think we also want to make it look extra clickable by having it have a hover effect. Um, so we'll say background color, and we'll just give it like a E, and we're going to have border, or we'll just say border color, because that's all we're really changing. And we'll have it just be darker than this. So let's look at the next darkest version of this using open color. And we'll do that. And actually for the background color, we're going to use this very, very light gray, I think. Because I don't like E. It's like too blah. OK, let's try that. Nice, now it looks clickable, and now this edit button looks clickable too, except when you hover over edit, <coughs> you don't really want the background to pop up. Um, but that's fine, whatever. I'm kind of okay with it. Who knew building a remake app in practice was gonna be hard? Um, what did people say? Okay, nice. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, it's not super bad. I, what could I do to prevent that? I would have to use JavaScript, right, I think, to edit the parent. <coughs> um, yeah, I was curious about that too. What does PB mean? Okay, so we're going to make this clickable. So to-do list item, this is going to be an anchor tag. That's going to be an anchor tag. Oh no, now we have an anchor tag inside of an anchor tag. So let's uh, make this a span. And the to-do list edit, that means it's not going to have the text on decoration by default. So we're going to have to add that in. <coughs> okay, so now let's refresh that. Nice, okay, so it looks the same. And now we have an anchor. And we're gonna set the href equal to, um, huh. nice, peanut butter memcache. Okay, so we're gonna add the user, the username in here, and I forget how that's coming in. Uh, so we have to check the back end really quick. Um, Android routes, how do I pass this in? Current user. Uh, no, I don't want current user, I want page, page author. So I'm gonna say uh, page author dot details dot username and then we're gonna have slash and then uh, to do list and then slash the ID so we'll do to do list dot ID okay nice so let's see what that looks like uh, gives us an underline. That's not something that we want it to have. So we're going to have to remove that over here. We're going to say um, text 
decoration, none. Okay, cool, so that should get rid of that. <coughs> Boom, we have a clickable link to a to-do list item. We didn't get the username though. Uh, that's unfortunate. Let's see, page author details username. I believe that um, should give it to us. But let's see, uh, if I go into remake data and then details and then details, huh? And if I look in get user data, we have the ability to get user data and it's going to return details and app data. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's debug this a little bit. So we're going to go into our rendered routes and at this route, we are going to console log the page author. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. We will refresh the page and we will go to our terminal and we will see it's details username. No, okay, so it's not it's not there. Details username and that's coming from the current user. So it's current it should be current user dot details dot username. <coughs> uh, oh it's because we're not passing in the page author to the to-do list. Um, okay, cool. So we're gonna say page author is page author. Now let's refresh this. Oh man, what? Why not? Hmm. It's very weird to me. Um, let's see, let's do like a pre tag. And let's put the um, page author in here and let's look up handlebars debug variable <coughs> um, log huh. Okay, built-in helpers. This might help. If, unless, each, with, look up log. Log, what does this do? Okay. So let's try this. So we're going to just do log that. And we're going to refresh the page. And that'll be in our terminal. Undefined. Undefined here. But it should be defined here. Unless we have a bug. So refresh. Okay, so we're getting it there, right? Because if I remove it on the <coughs> back end, and I um, clear the console and I refresh. Boom, I get it. So I get it from this top level one. So I have page author here. Oh, what? Wait. No. I, sorry, I have it here on the index, but I'm passing it into the to-do list and I'm not able to access the page author here because it's um, it's uh, undefined here. So that's weird. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. I promise I will be back in under two minutes. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. Two minutes or so.
Okay, I'm back guys. So let's figure out this really weird thing that's going on in our template. We are logging the page author here and it's not showing up even though in our parent partial we're passing in the page author. Uh, what does WB mean? Will, will, well by? Does it mean well by? Um, oh, welcome back. Oh, cool. I'm glad it doesn't mean well by. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, I think I know what this, what, why this is happening. Because I think that the context in here is changed. So I think page author is no longer equal to page author. So I need to find some way to get the parent context. Uh, handlebars, whatever. Google can figure it out. Handle, handle arbs, um, and then parent context in each. <coughs> do you reference, do you reference? the parent scope uh, with dot dot slash. Okay. You can reference a parent scope and then you can go into multiple levels. Okay. Or you can do root. <coughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I like root. The new method is using dot notation and this last notation is deprecated. <coughs> Okie dokie. Uh, okay, so we wanna use root. So I think it's, it was at, at root, right? Um, so at root dot page author. So that should give it to us. Let's see. Boom. Boom. Nice. Awesome. 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 Okay. So, um, let's get rid of these logs. So we're going to delete that log and we're going to delete this log. And now Let's, uh, let's actually commit this because we've done a lot of work on this. So let's say like styling, mostly it's been styling and building the to-do list page. Styling, hey dev, devs, <laughs> I don't know if it's dev snaked or devs naked, but welcome and welcome Ender. Ender, are you named after Ender from Ender's Game? Uh, so we're going to say styling, um, styling the to-do list page. Awesome. That's an awesome book. Uh, what did you think of the movie? I didn't like the movie as much, but it was still pretty good. Um, I feel like the book was, was pretty good. It uh, was much, much stronger. But it was kind of cool seeing people flying around in like the, the battles. Who knows, maybe they'll do a, a, a like Netflix show on it or something. Yeah, yeah, it was way too compressed. I agree. Um, that's cool. Uh, that's a great, sometimes I think I'm in Ender's Game, to be honest. <laughs> sometimes I think life is Ender's Game. Uh, it's like you, th you think you're doing things that don't matter, but they really do. <laughs> um, but, oh, shoot. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't read the book. Um, that's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, I think I've read it twice. Um, but I've read, I think I've read like Dune like three times. Uh, Dune for me, I mean, it's, there are some problems with it, especially in like a modern context, but uh, did I read the rest of the Ender series? I feel like, I might not have. I feel like I maybe I like. So I've heard about it. I've heard a lot about it, and I've I've heard that it gets like more philosophical, 
And I think I kind of got uh, spoiled about like what it's about. Um, yeah, I'm not going to like spoil it for anyone else, but um, I've heard that it gets like a lot more philosophical and a lot more like heavy, I guess. Um, but yeah, would you recommend them as like a, a pretty strong fan of the of the original? Oh right, yeah, okay. I mean, you know what? I like honestly, I'm really gonna check it out. I'm reading a couple things right now, but I'm gonna put that on my list. Uh, okay, okay. Xenocide is boring. Um, <laughs> it's funny because if if you like, okay, definitely read Speaker of the Dead. It's funny just that statement, like, <laughs> yeah, well, yes, the killing off of an entire species is boring. <laughs> but I get what you mean. You're talking about the book. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's see. We have this. Um, but we can no longer add a new to-do list. Okay, uh, let's see why that is. So let's look in the back end. Nope, we don't got any hints there. So, but on the front end, it's going to say, cannot read property, blah, 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 of null. Of null. So the list element, the list element is null. Oh, it's because, yep, 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 yep. Okay, that makes sense. It's because I changed the class. So if I change this to... To do lists. Oh, it should really be called to do lists. Um, geez. Uh, I think I should just call this like lists to keep it simple. No. It really stinks having lists of lists because it's naming gets so much harder. <laughs> it really does. Uh, okay, we're gonna say to-do lists. We're gonna keep it at to-do lists. To-do lists. So hard to say. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to-do lists, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. <clears throat> um, so we're gonna change those to that, but we'll keep this one singular. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then here, we just have to add an S there. <clears throat> Okay, so let's try this. Refresh, styled the same. We can add a new one, uh, and we can edit it. No, we can't. Oh, we can't edit it because... <coughs> because it's in an anchor tag. Um, so that makes sense. So we either need to make it a separate button, or what we can do is... Um, <clears throat> I think I have uh, a helper here. I don't know. Let's see. Prevent defaults. Nope. Okay. So I don't have it there, so I guess we'll just add it to the main app, which makes sense. We wouldn't really want to add it anywhere else. <clears throat> and let's do like helpers.js. We'll do it. Uh, we'll just do it like that. Um, let's actually make a folder for it. We'll delete it. Delete file. New file. Um, and we'll say like event, event helpers.js, <clears throat> and then from main, we're going to import, um, and we're going to do, uh, dot slash helpers slash <coughs> event helpers. Okay, and then in our event helpers, we're going to have document <coughs> body um, <coughs> add event listener. 
Then we're going to watch for a, a click. <clears throat> and then we're going to do function. And we're going to get the event. And we're going to say if event target drawn to code. How's it going? I love your name. Uh, do you work with um, <clears throat> with like drawings or illustrations or like are you a creative programmer or is, do you just like that name? Uh, so we're going to do event target closest and we're going to look for a class that is uh, called JSPD and if that's found we're going to prevent defaults. So what this will do is if you click on any item with a class that has this class on it, it's just going to prevent the default. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, okay, so we're going to do we're going to save that. Let's refresh this page, make sure we don't get any errors. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like this might be working. And then on our anchor tag, we're going to have that class. Um, and I like just like prepending classes that ha that interact with the JavaScript with JS dash. That's why I have that. Okay, so now we click that, boom, it pops up the edit, and it doesn't, um, and it doesn't uh, trigger the anchor tag. Okay, so great. So let's uh, commit that. And we're gonna say, uh, like allow clicking on edit without triggering anchor link. Okay, cool. So now let's try to go into one of these. I put the prevent default on the top level, <laughs> which means that it's, uh, it's not going to work as a regular link. So let's put it on the edit button instead. Okay, let's refresh, try it again. It works. Now if I click on the regular link, boom. Okay, so now we've got the to-do list page. Um, okay, so let's go into the to-do list page. And, ooh, this is gonna get a little bit hard. So we have the page container, we have default save, we have type object. Um, and let's uh, attach an ID here. So we're gonna do data o key ID, and we're gonna set that to current item dot ID. Oh, hey, Flip. Oh, yeah, Flip, I didn't notice you were here. Welcome to the chat. Have you been here for a while? Yeah, how's it going? <coughs> um, uh, so I'm changing Remake a lot, just so you know. So your library that depends on it, uh, it'll still work, but it's not. Um, that, that NPM package is no longer going to be maintained, just so you know. Because I'm transitioning into making it a full stack framework instead of just a front end framework. You can still pull it out and use it as your own front end framework. Uh, it'll uh, hopefully always work for that, but yeah. Okay, awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to have to do's. We're going to have a list of to do's. And we're going to say, um, I don't know what the key should be. Okay, so let's look at our data. So let's go into data, and I believe I'm logged in as David. Yep, yeah, I'm logged in as David. We're gonna go into the app data, go into David. Okay, so we have this to-do list. Okay, so this is gonna have uh, like this, to-dos, and then it's gonna have a list. You were thinking the other day about using Remake with Electron, and instead of saving to JSON or DB, you could save to Dropbox or something. Um, so you could sync 
uh, task fellow. That would be pretty cool. Um, that would be that would be pretty cool. That would be awesome. But you you could still use uh, JSON, right? Because you could just use Dropbox as the database, but you could use it with JSON files, right? I think that would make it much easier if you used uh, JSON. It is actually it's already exporting JSON, anyways. Yeah, that would be pretty. That would be a pretty sweet experiment. You know, something I'm thinking about is. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how to do this, uh, but I think it would be really cool to have a command line tool that was like remake deploy, and then it just deploys your app automatically, and then you get like a custom domain, you know, so it's like, you know, blah, 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 dot remake the web com, and then you can have people sign into it or use it or whatever. I've been thinking a lot about that because I, I don't know, it really excites me a lot. Um, Okay, so we're going to have this to do's key for this for this page, <clears throat> and then it's, that's going to be a list, and then we're going to say current item dot to do's, and then we're going to have to do to do, and we're going to pass in to do, and it's going to be uh, this. Yep. Yeah. So, and I don't know if we'll need the page author, but let's pass it in anyways. And we're going to say add to do. Um, but yeah, I'm actually, I'm thinking about hire, hiring someone to make a command line tool that would let you log in to a web service, sign up for a web service, and then have a single command to either um, deploy your app or back up your data from that app uh, so that it could just be so that like anyone could deploy a remake app with like a single command pretty much um, and see it like live and invite people to it and have people sign up and, and use it. I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, so I've been thinking about hiring someone to do that. Um, okay, so we're gonna say to do's. Okay, so this is the basics for this. The thing we need to do is um, have a to do here. So, right here, we're going to have class of to do's underscore underscore to do uh, data o type of object uh, data o key id of um, to do dot id. You think Flipcoder says they think Linode and DigitalOcean probably have APIs, so that's probably possible. Um, yeah, I was thinking about uh, doing it like you. It wouldn't be your like on your own DigitalOcean. It would be on like a web service. You know, like you'd go to like remakethewebcom and you would be able to like see the service, and then um, yeah, you would you would deploy to that single instance. I guess it would also, I was thinking today that it would be kind of cool to just be able to deploy your own version to DigitalOcean. Um, but I'm not as excited about that because I think that uh, it would, would one, take more technical expertise and, um, and, and two, just make it harder for people to get started with it in general. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That that would be a pretty good intermediate step, honestly, to like make it super easy to deploy. Um, so we're gonna have the text, and that's gonna be equal to the to do text, and then we're gonna sync it with the inner text, and we're gonna make it editable. Uh, if you run other people's code, you have all the concerns of a web host with restricting things. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I would only I would be only be uploading the templates, so and I guess I guess JavaScript too. So they could run front end JavaScript 
and CSS and uh, handlebars templates, but that's all. They wouldn't be able to run any uh, server code. But that's the whole idea behind Remake, is that you don't have to touch the server code in order to have a working application. And, you know, you have the user accounts and resetting passwords and all that automatically handles for you. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's a, like a slightly longer term plan. I'm not, not quite sure yet. Okay, so one thing we have to do for this to-do is in this bootstrap data, we have to create a to-do.json. <clears throat> and we're going to say to-do and then colon and then like this. Hey, cap, cap God C and hey, BF Gasher, how's it going? Uh, what are you guys up to? What are you working on? What are you interested in? Why did you stop by? Um, wh what piqued your interest? Okay, so that should work, I believe. Um, let's try reloading this page. Okay. And <laughs> should I click it? Oh my goodness, it did not work. It did not work because I think I don't have a... Do I have a save on this page? I guess I do. Let's check. Uh, data o save. Yeah, I do have a save on this page. And it's going to save to uh. Okay, let's look at my data. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is bad news. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. You're going to start streaming on a new channel. You're setting up Code Hustle. What is, uh, what's Code Hustle? And what channel are you streaming on? Um, okay, so the issue is we're not saving to an ID right here. So we need to have ID colon and then current item that ID. I forgot about that part. Okay, so let's delete this data that we accidentally created. And let's refresh the page. Let's, look, let's check out Code Hustle. Code Hustle, okay. Oh, it's empty here. Is, it the, is this a thing? Do you have a website for it or anything? I don't think it's this one. Yeah, tell us if you have like a website for it or any anything else. Uh, and like, what I guess what I'm most interested in is like, what is the philosophy behind it? Okay. Yeah, but like, what do you, what do you like? Is there anything in particular you'd be covering, or is it just like um, you'll just be doing, you know, your standard thing under a different uh, name? Either way, it's cool. You know, like I, I'm not doing anything. Well, I guess I'm doing something slightly focused because I mostly focus on remake these days. But um, I mean, it's it's my own thing. So uh, yeah. I think that that's a good idea. There's good sources for that flip coder if you want to do that. There's um, so I don't know if you know uh, GitHub's explore page, but if you go there, it, they have some really really cool like trending packages that you know might be of interest to you. There's also um, a newsletter that I get called Web Tools Weekly. Actually, I, I totally recommend everyone watching right now to sign up for this. This is like the most useful newsletter I, I get. Um, here, let me show you the like archive. They, every single uh, issue is so cool. So they have like a CSS toolkit, they have a React boilerplate, a minimal style sheet thing, right? Uh, just to make the page not look awful. So lit HTML, like all these just like cool little things you can just like check out in your spare time. Um, so this would be a good source also. And then the last place I would recommend 
is uh, Reddit has uh, cool Git projects, uh, subreddit. Um, so if anyone wants to do this, uh, cool GitHub projects. So yeah, you can check out like all of these cool ones. Um, you know, OpenDrop, an open, an open Air, Apple AirDrop implementation written in Python. That's, that sounds pretty cool. So Flipcoder, you should totally do it. Uh, JD Hirsch says, well, we code all day. Um, let me see. Fig. Nice. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, we code to make money. We are code hustling. Oh, okay, cool. We code to make money. Okay, so maybe uh, is it is it like um, freelancers mostly, or is it like indie makers mostly? I would imagine you're probably talking like indie makers. So Cap God C, sorry for ignoring you. I'm like a little nervous about this question. What is Remake? So Remake is a um, full stack framework that makes it incredibly easy to start uh, 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 to create a web app. So um, Basically, instead of work, worrying about like the back end and how your database is set up and how your, your you know, database models are set up, all you have to do is attach some attributes to some HTML and you'll have like a working um, interactive CRUD application. So basically, it supports create, reading, updating, and deleting items out of the box and it's automatically going to save your data to the back end. Um, and all you have to use is HTML to get most of it working. Um, and it, yeah, it's going pretty well so far. You can see it, it's not ready yet, uh, but it's, um, you can see the documentation at remaketheweb.com and it'll take you to this uh, documentation page and you can see like the to do's app and the readme annotated source code. We actually uh, created a Trello clone in about 30 minutes flat. Uh, we had the design, but we didn't have any of the, you know, CRUD interfaces working or anything, and we got the dragging and dropping for everything, as well as I was explaining it at the same time. Uh, so that's pretty cool to watch. Um, so yeah, so just in case you're interested, and if you have any follow-up questions, please ask me, because if anything's unclear, I want to make it more clear. Um, and right now, the uh, headline is a different way to build web apps, which I admit is a little boring, but I haven't thought of anything better uh, that's you know simple and punchy, but I will, I will. Um, so JD Hirsch says, not sure where I want to take it, but I like the name and thought it could maybe go somewhere. Nice, ideas welcome. I like the idea of reviewing a GitHub projects. So when I hear, so JD Hirsch, when I hear code hustle, I hear like, we're like here to make things like, quickly, you know, like also we're here to like make money, but like what I would be the most interested in when I hear that name is like, I want to see you like make a web app that you're charging a client for in like an afternoon or something, you know? Um, awesome. Thank you, Cap God C. Um, yeah, I would, I, if you're like, if you get like very interested in it, definitely check out the, um, the 30 minute tutorial. Cause that's going to give you the, um, the most, uh, you know, insight into the project. Um, and the, just so you know, just so everyone knows, the to-dos app is out of date at this point. Um, I'm like, I'm gonna be working on the, uh, like how to get started sections, um, but this should work right now. This should create a new remake app for you and, and get you off to a good start. This is, this is actually what we, we're using right now um, for this to-dos app. Uh, but yeah, everything's going to be a little bit better very soon. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. So yeah, I needed to be saving to an ID, so I think this should work now. So now I have to do text. Boom, and it works. And if I look at the data, um, hey, Rage LOL, how's it going? Uh, what are you working on? What are you interested in? Uh, so to do list, and then we have to do's, and then we have a to do item in here. So that's great, that's, uh, that's working. Now let's style this page. Oh, and we also want to add a back button probably. So let's see, to do list. Okay, so in here, we're gonna add a button uh, with a class. Oh no, we're gonna add an anchor tag with a class of button 
or oh, sorry, jeez. And we're gonna say like go. Uh, so JD Hurst says I started some vodcast at work under that name and did some tips and tricks. People responded well. I work for the government, so it's a bit harder to do these sorts of things. That's understandable. Um, oh yeah, I totally forgot to uh, to follow. I'm gonna do that too. Um, my bad. Um, okay, so this just redirects here. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, I wanted to check this out. So this is by Flipcoder. Build fully functional configuration dialogues using simple JSON. Flipcoder, this looks very similar to Remake. I feel like you got the idea of this from Remake. <laughs> totally ignoring the, uh, the the fact that this was started three years ago. Uh, no, this is awesome. Volume. So how is volume? This is like so cool. This is so slick. I, I, I really like this flipcoder. So how is the volume defined now? Also, just just so you know, uh, Flipcoder, if you want to update... Oh, okay, nice, that's awesome. But if you want to update, if you want to update the, um, the screenshot here, there's like a super cool tool for this. Uh, code screenshot tool. Um, this, car I think a carbon, I think this is the one. Yeah, so look at this amazing screenshot, right? So like, if you, uh, let's see our, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. Okay, we're gonna save this. We're gonna run it through OCR. I wonder if this is going to work. This is probably not going to work. Nope, that did not work at all. Well, anyways, you get the point. Um, yeah, but I, if you use this screenshot tool, it's pretty, pretty sweet. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you, if you like Dev Swag, a dev in Colorado started a brand developer.io and was cool enough to apply a discount code for code hustle it. Oh, you don't get a kickback? Oh, okay, nice. That's cool. So yeah, if anyone wants one of these, ooh, this is the cutest thing I've ever fucking seen. Can I, I can swear on, on stream, right? Uh, but this di little dinosaur, I want this. I want it on a t-shirt though. That's cool, so if anyone likes this, if anyone wants to advertise to the world that they are <laughs> making a lot of money and ruining everything about everything, uh, you know, be associated with Facebook and um, all the controversy around Google, then yeah, buy one of these shirts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, these, the dino shirts look really cool, but they only have an ugly one. Why do they only have, it sucks when every single time I like want a shirt, they only have the ugly version of that. Yeah, I think it was page two. You should tell, so if you know these people, you should tell them this is ugly and that they should make a new word. Oh, it's not ugly anymore. Okay, but they remove the I am offline thing, make the dinosaur a tiny bit smaller, and maybe like put it over the, like the side. That's what I want. I just want like a little dino, that's it. I don't care about that. I, I don't, the I, I am offline, that's really sad. I don't want that. Um, also, how do you know? I heard that dinosaurs went to the moon, so I don't know what you're talking about. 
Um, okay, so now we've got this working. Let's style this page. Is that what I was working on? Um, okay, so we're going to say go back, and if we refresh, we should have a button now that says go back. Um, that's cool. Maybe, uh, hey, Rodrigo Santos, how's it going? What are you, what are you working on? You, it says you're a developer in your name. What do you, what do you do? Um, I think I maybe want this button to be a little bit smaller, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's just style the rest of the page. So <clears throat> let's go into our SAS and let's locate this file in our sidebar and do 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 okay so now we have we're gonna say to do's I guess and we're gonna create a new helper even though it's not a helper and I have way too many files open so let's close some of these This is the page we're styling. Okay, boom, 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 got that. Okay, so um, so we're gonna have to dos as the top level thing, and then we're gonna have uh, this. So and underscore underscore to do. Okay, so let's style this page. So the first thing, oh, did I not add a heading? Oh, and I also didn't make the, <laughs> the back button work. Okay, so we need this to be href and then point to the root. Okay, so let's refresh this and go back. <gasps> We're missing all of our to-do lists. <laughs> oh no, I ruined everything. To-do lists? What, where are our to-do lists? Oh my goodness, remake, remake, I, man, I, I started using this new framework called Remake and it is such a pain in the butt to use. I can't believe how bad, how badly designed this is. Every time I try to do something, you know, something else breaks. Um, okay, hey Dan, Danielle QQ, how's it going? Hey, electrical longboard. Yeah, seriously. Ay ay ay. XD for sure. All I want to do is watch video games, like when I get to this point. Okay, but seriously, what is going on here? So I have the data, and if I look, uh, blah blah blah. If I look in index, right? Am I in index? Yeah, I'm definitely in index. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I know what it is. Haha, <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> you guys don't know what it is, but I know what it is. Probably because it's my stupid framework. <laughs> okay, so to do list, let's. I'm, bad, I'm passing on the page author here. So I have it here. So we need to have the home go to page author dot details dot username. That's it. So now if I go back here and I click go back, boom. Because if I'm on a non-username page, I don't have access to the data. Oh my goodness. Okay. There needs to be like a warning that pops up when you go to a page that's trying to render data that doesn't have a username in the URL. Okay, so anyways, let's try to fix this so that I don't run into this problem again. So on the index page, I'm going to say, well, there's something I'm passing in here. Uh, blah, 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 rendered routes. What do I pass in here? Pa page has app data. Okay, so we're gonna say, um, we're gonna do like a top level if. So we're gonna do if page has app data, then render this. Otherwise, render something else. Uh, da, da, da. If. Okay, so we're gonna do div class page container div and we're going to say uh, welcome to to do's 
Yeah, totally. I mean, I um, uh, honestly, I, I just want to support good, good projects and good coders. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, anytime you're working on something, uh, just let me know and I, I will feature it. Um, as long as it doesn't get over the top, you know, like as long as it's not like taking up the whole stream. Of course, like, I, I, I love learning about new projects. Okay, so we'll do this and let's refresh this page now. Now we should get a welcome. Um, we didn't get a welcome. And that's because it's saying that it has app data, right? Let's see. So let's do our special log. We're going to do app data. Let's refresh. Um, we didn't get anything from our log. Oh, that's because we're on the to-do list page. Oh my goodness. We need to be on the index page. Okay. So we're going to do this. Wrap this there. Grab this. Select this. Okay. So index page looks like this. And then we're going to indent this. Okay, cool. So let's try again. One, two, three, refresh. Welcome to do this. This is the nicest. Um, okay, so we're, now let's say uh, we should have like something else here. So we should say like it's true. This is the worst thing. Um, okay, so let's say like if we'll make it super simple. So we'll just say like if they're logged in. So say if current user um, else and if. Okay, so if there's a current user, uh, that which means that they're logged in, then we're going to say uh, button, or no, a, a, anchor tag href uh, class button. Um, thank you, flip coder. <laughs> um, okay, and then we're gonna do uh, current user dot details dot username, and it's gonna say like go to your to dos. Welcome to. I don't know. This is such a stupid welcome message. No, you were totally right. Uh, you're, <laughs> you've always, you're always right. Um, okay, so this is going to, and then we're going to say sign up. Um, no, I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry for giving you the, the side eye. <laughs> um, and we're going to say sign up. Uh, sign up. Okay. Let's go here, go back here. And so this should say, go to your to-dos. Okay, awesome. And we should have, I think we have some margin helpers in our spacing CSS. Oh my goodness, spacing, here we go. Uh, M dash and then a number. Okay, so we're gonna do class M dash uh, 32. Uh, three, five, T, four, N, zero, or that spells S to, S to, oh man, I didn't get it. Spells S, S to, no, Estenor. Estenor, welcome to the channel. How's it going? Um, okay, so now, oh, H2 doesn't have a, uh, <laughs> a default uh, font size. Oh, wait. QAing glasses? Oh, you look crazy right now. You're locked, watching stream and occasionally turning your head quickly to see if the world blurs with glasses. Nice. Does it? How's it going? 32 should work. I don't know why. Oh, is it being overwritten? That would suck. M32. No, it's not including... Why isn't it getting... 
Let's try M8. It's not get it's not getting the spacing. What's going on? Oh, I need the bottom. I need uh, this. Okay, so I'm generating it for all of the sides. Top side. Oh, and you're you're slicing the string too. Okay, cool. So yeah, sorry. We need bottom here. That was my bad. Okay, M B thirty two. There we go. Three, two, one. Refresh. Nice. Okay. Now we need a font size on that. Uh, let's see. Do we have any font size helpers? Open color. Which container side now? Spacing. Not really. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, we'll just, we'll have like a, um, I guess, uh, let's change this from page container to page, and then we'll have the ability to like have a heading, and then we'll say like font size, like 32px or something like that. Uh, and we also have to rename this because it's no longer a page container, it's page. We have to rename it in here. And then we uh, have to name it, rename it inside of all of our assets container. So only a couple of places. So it's our page, page, and where's my search? There we go, page. Um, I do. Ooh, Flipcoder. <laughs> uh, Flipcoder subscribed on Twitch Prime. Thank you for subscribing, Flipcoder. <laughs> yeah, Salvin, can you please be my subscription announcement? <laughs> yeah, Flipcoder. Like, my, uh, the, the only, um, subscription announcement that I could afford has a uh, delay of a minute. So, you know, I'm sorry that I couldn't afford something that uh, that is good enough for you, you know? Like, I, I, I care about my viewers very much that I purchased the sub-announcement and it has a, just has a delay. Just has a little, uh, a little lag. I, you know what? I, I tried to set it up in Streamlabs um, I'm, I'm on a Mac, so I don't have, like, all of the stream elements things. But I can, I can get it, I can get some things through Streamlabs, but I don't know how to do it. Here, I don't know. Can I go into Streamlabs with, without giving away my account details? <laughs> Let's see. This is a challenge. Might be a challenge. Oh, uh, no, I don't want to... Okay, maybe this works. I think this is the one I'm already using. Set up, okay, skip this. No, this isn't the one I was already using. Ugh, I can't, wait, it must be. What? Yeah, okay, it totally is. It's just giving me this cloud bot. Enable, should I enable CloudBot? Can you tell me? Should I? Tell, someone tell me, just say yes or no. CloudBot? CloudBot, what do you do? Engage your viewers. Do you guys want a bot to engage you? Oh, you can duel. Quotes. Uh, I don't know. Let's try it, right? Enable cloud bot. Type mod stream labs. Okay, here we go. You know, someone should get like a Twitch username that's like 
Streamlabs or something. I bet some people like mistype this all the time, and then you could just like take over people's channels. That's a really bad idea, by the way. I probably can't. I'm probably I'm gonna get banned by Twitch just from saying that. Um, download. I can't download it because uh, I'm on a Mac. Streamlabs OBS. Okay, here we go. Copy widget URL. Navigate to the editor tab. Okay, wait. No, I, I can do that here, right? Can I do this here? So we're going to add a thing. What is it? It's like a media source or a browser. Stream labs. Okay. And we're going to do URL, this. What should I set it to? I guess 800 by 600 is fine. FPS, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Let's try it. Oh no, what does it look like? Someone, someone has to no, donate. <laughs> Uh, no, I'll test. I'll test it. I'm gonna test it out. Let's put it. Should we put it in the middle? I don't know. We'll try it. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Twitch, so I can see it too. And then I'm gonna test it out. Uh, let's see. Um, test. Cloudbot. That's a really cute name though, I gotta admit. Cloudbot is. Okay, alert box? Is this it? Learn tips. Okay. I you know what? I got there before you guys said anything. I know I know what I'm doing. Follows, subscriptions, resubs, donations, host, bits, raids, redemptions, merch, cloudbot redemption, streamlabs, prime gift. Okay. Widget URL, I already got that. Okay, test follow. Woohoo! Nice. Test subscription. Okay, let's see what happens. <gasps> Whoa, I wanna get like a million subscribers. Yeah, look at all these subscriptions. <laughs> Salvin, did you unfollow me just to follow <laughs> again? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, test merch. What is merch? Whoa, just bought a t-shirt. A remake JS t-shirt, or a remake t-shirt. Okay, so yeah, let's let's see. What is um, what do you guys think I should customize? Should I do a theme? Active. Sound. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Sound. Ooh, prof profan profanity filter. I should probably do that. Okay, it already is. Wait, what is it? They let through slobs. Oh man, I don't know. Slob sounds weird. Sounds like it's gonna be hard. Where are the sounds? Guys, I don't. I think you're lying to me. There's no sounds. <laughs> Moderation delay. Oh, you gotta wait six minutes. Or no, that's ten minutes. Uh, ten minutes. It's weird listening to myself in the background. Okay, let's see. Uh, alert carry. How do you do the sound thing? Do you guys know? Okay, let's see. Streamlabs, alert, sound, 
OBS. Oh no. Oh, no way. So I just, maybe... Browser source. So, so wait, I think it is playing a, a, slight, a, sound, a slight sound for me, right? Here, I have to pause my music. Let's try it. I think, yeah, that was coming from Twitch. Um, yeah, it was, because this doesn't show an um, audio thing. You don't hear anything? It's like, ring. No? Hmm. Yeah. Ooh, we got a new follow. Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe you need, oh, maybe you need, okay, so let's see. Uh, no, I don't think, is that it? And, oh, can I do this? Audio output country. Oh no, this is just for adding a new one. Okay, let's see. Uh, OBS Stream Labs Alert Sound. Okay. Okay. That doesn't really help everyone else. <clears throat> okay, let's just watch this YouTube video. Uh, where is the answer? No, this isn't going to help, right? Because that's for Streamlabs. Um, okay, no, no, no. We want OBS notification sound for alert box. We don't want Streamlabs. If you un oh yeah. Well, that's true, but I'm. Um, I guess that's fine. Okay, let's try it. Okay, let's test it. But now, blah 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 blah. blah. I think it it has. Well, it only has feedback if I have the stream open. Okay. Um. So does that work? Could you guys hear it? Did you hear it? What? Oh my goodness. There must be another source. Hmm. Okay. Uh Let's look on Reddit. Or uh, yeah. Let's look on that one and let's look. Oh. This will work. Okay. Can you guys hear this?
Okay. I want to fix that. I feel like that's probably the main issue. But, okay. But then if I play music, so let's play... You guys can't hear that? The music? Yeah, but I didn't have this on. Hmm. Okay. Audio capture. Oh, maybe I need another audio capture. I bet I do. Um. So I have an audio input. Do I need an audio output capture? No, I don't have anything. There's nothing, there's no options. Hmm. Oh no, now I have two audio input captures. What, how did I get the other one? Huh? I didn't add, did I add another one? Oh no. Guys, I'm totally messed up. Let's see, so maybe, uh, oh, that's the top, oh, okay. That's the output, okay. And that didn't do anything because there was no source. It didn't work, right? You guys couldn't hear the music. Okay, let's configure this. Oh, built-in microphone. Well, that's probably what it's using for the default, right? And I can't, so, okay. Uh, let's see, OBS, is this called Studio? Yeah, OBS Studio. Okay, OBS Studio. Uh, system, system sound, or like, oh no, okay, well, let's just mute that one then, okay, I think that should be better, is it not double anymore, okay, okay, let's look at this one, ay, 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 What did JD Hirsch say? You need to go through setting up audio device for OBS. Oh yeah? Oh, I think I've heard about that. Yeah, like you need to like combine all the sounds or something. Okay, let's say Mac. Okay. No game sound, okay, great. Man, Macs suck for streaming, huh? I feel like I should just use like switch to Windows and I'll be everything would be good. I just use Streamlabs OBS. Soundflower. Oh, okay. I think I've heard of Soundflower. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Oh yeah. I have this one. Install. I have I show you though. Open audio MIDI, audio MIDI. So now I gotta do plus and create multi, okay. Create multi output. We're getting there. We're gonna do, we're gonna check both of those. Drift correlation, only for the first one. Okay, open system preferences. Okay, wait, so that's all I need to do for this? Close that. Okay, now we're gonna open system preferences and go to sound. <clears throat> and we're gonna do, in the output, 
we're gonna see our new device. Boom. Okay. Blah 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 blah. Okay. As there's no feedback for me. I was worried about that. Select your newly created multi output device. Open OBS. Go to settings and then audio. Okay. So we're gonna go to settings. Wait, setting. Oh no, this might re require something else. Okay, no. Okay, so mic auxiliary audio device and two, and we're gonna do built-in microphone. And I show you audio capture. You should be able to record and stream. Um, okay, let's try this. So, okay, does that work? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's look, turn it down. I can raise my... Oh no, I don't have any volume, guys. You guys removed my volume control. I have no volume anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got music now. So now you guys can hear the music and I, I can't turn the music down. Oh, I can turn it down in OBS. That's a good idea. So right here... Wait, how do I turn it down? It's just right here, right? But this would turn me down. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you uh, correct me on my drift correction? Okay, what do you? Oh, scroll down. What? Okay, I swear you guys are like geniuses. You guys are like super geniuses. Like I like. How do you know that? Like, wow. Okay. So, anyways. Uh. So wait. Oh, what do you? Okay. Wait. 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 Okay. I'm gonna figure this out. So one is built-in microphone and two is the desktop audio. Okay, so this first one, okay, so I wanna turn this one down. Boom, how's that? Is that comfortable for you guys? <laughs> oh, that's, that's really nice. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna, okay, take off your earphones or whatever. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit because I can't hear it, right? Oh, I, I forgot to set the right drift. Okay, okay. So let's set the right drift. Uh, uh, sound? Was it in sound? Or it was in the audio one, right? Okay, so we'll go to audio MIDI. Oh, oh, you're saying this one, not that one. Right? That's the right one? Okay. So now... But I can't... No, I still can't. No, I have no control over the audio. I can turn it off. Oh no, I can't turn it back on. Oh no, there it is. Rip, rip the tutorial. Wait, can you guys hear me? You guys can't hear me? Oh, okay, you can hear me. Okay. Can you hear the music? I can't control my system audio anymore. Uh, okay, I'm turning up the music because I can't hear it. Yeah. Okay, can't hear the music. Let's go back here. It's definitely capturing it. Let's go up. How's that? Yeah? Okay, tell me when it gets uh, comfortable. Oh yeah, for OBS, yeah, for this.
That's good? Nice. Okay, do you guys prefer with or without music? Because, uh... I kind of like it. Good? Okay, so let's try um, the alert box. Did you guys hear it? I can turn it down a little bit. It's honestly a little bit loud for me. Um, like I just like like nice background. Yeah. You and like there. And this isn't like my favorite music. I'll show you guys my favorite music. This is like the best music ever. I think I've listened to this like a million times. This isn't actually... Oh, this one's pretty good actually. But there's another one that's even better. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Whatever, we'll just go with this. Oh my goodness, how sad is this? No, this is a little bit too sad. Let's put in study music. Maybe we'll find like something really good. Chill step live stream. Okay, let's go with chill step. Okay, we are wasting time officially now. Now I wish I was just back at the other one. A stream and a stream, <laughs> exactly. So the notifica these notifications, the sound was low for you guys. That's pretty low. But you guys can hear it. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Okay, Android says, what you could try is set your system audio to built in and your OBS to I show you. Oh yeah? So if I, so I go to sound, and then I put headphones. <laughs> no, but I can switch it back, that's okay. Okay, and then in OBS, can you guys, you guys still have it? It doesn't work. Why is this stuff so complicated, right? <laughs> like, don't you think, don't you guys think like this should be a solved problem at this point in like the course of human history? <laughs> like, I feel like this, this shouldn't be that tough of a problem. Okay, whatever. can't control the men the audio oh whatever that's fine okay so you guys are good okay nice and we have some sad music going on in the background um Yeah, let's do some coding, seriously. Uh, but first, we, <laughs> we have to find good music. Uh, it's just gonna take a second. Um, where, what is the one I like? Oh, yeah. Oh, but I can't, I can't do Mr. Sewers at Jeep because it's all like copyrighted stuff. Okay, we'll just do this, whatever. We're fine. Boom, 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 boom. This might even be copyrighted, it probably is. I'd probably get muted on Twitch later. Uh, okay, cool. So let's get back to coding. Um, let's see, where were we? Welcome to to-dos. 
Okay, and we have the page header. Oh no. Fix your sound only... Oh, only to get Twitch muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's working now. Okay, so let's see. Let's go into the main page. And then down here, we're gonna say page header. Uh, or what was it? Heading or something? I forget what it was. Do, do, do. Uh, assets, SAS, helpers, page, heading. I always forget whether I, whether I name it heading or header. Uh, oh, and we want a marge and bottom. Woo, we got someone. Nope, I, don't, I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see it here. What happened? Can someone tell me what happened? Oh my goodness. No one's gonna tell me what happened? What happened? Someone did something. I don't know what happened. Oh well. Okay, so you can go to your to-dos. Oh, uh, let's set the um, default color. Like the default font color. Something a little bit nicer. Uh, to this one. Oh, someone followed. Awesome. Thank you for following someone. Uh, I'm gonna assume your name is someone. Yeah? Okay, you guys are really demanding today. No, I'm just kidding. It's all good ideas. Good ideas. I like them. Okay, so the bot. Why do they have me set up something every time I come here? It's like they're trying to monetize me or something. Whoa, did something happen? Uh, okay, so we've got the cloud bot. Let's see what cloud bot does. Okay. Symbol, okay, we don't want any of these protections. Modules. Oh yeah, there we go. Heist mini game. I don't know, do you guys want any of these mini games? Gamble, media share, eight ball, slots, duel. Duel kinda sounds fun. Okay, you guys can do a heist or a duel if you want. Or I don't know, you can do whatever you want. Why not, they're just commands. Emote pyramid. Uh, sure. Mode combo. Okay. All those newly created clips. Yeah, okay. No. Whatever. I don't want to give another one permission. Timers, quotes, <laughs> quote of the day. Quote, uh, everything is... Awesome. Doo -doo. Oh man, uh, things. There we go, we got a quote now. I don't know what that does. Q, loyalty. They can earn currency while I stream. Okay, is there a downside to doing that? Store, polls, betting, giveaways. I don't want to do betting. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now you got it, now it has it. Can someone try unfollowing and following? Hey, Obliv Oblivionaire, how's it going? Nice. I don't know why it said the quote right now, but that's cool. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's a, oh, that's because someone put the quote thing in. Nice. Wait, why? Did, but why did it say no quote found? Different things going on here. I don't know. Okay, we're good though. Okay, let's close that. Oh wait, let's. Uh, we got alerts here. Maybe there's some cool alerts. Nope, those are all boring alerts. Okay. 
Yeah, I know. I got. I know I got two bots. I don't care. I don't know why I have two bots. Why do I have two bots? Can someone just handle this? What is the difference between stream labs and stream elements? Aren't they the same thing? Ah. Okay. I'm done. I'm done with that. Uh. Okay. Whatever. I thought they were. I thought. I really thought they were. That's really sad. Slots? What does that do? It didn't work. Wait, did you lose? <laughs> oh no. Oh, it just didn't work. Ooh, it's working. Android, thank you for testing it out. Okay, cool. So, that's awesome. Now I'll actually know when people follow and do stuff. Okay, so back to coding. Coding, 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 coding. I think I'm gonna stop the stream soon. Like, probably within the next half an hour, just so you guys know. Woohoo! Woo! We got a cheer! Thank you, uh, Ice Cream Codes. Do, do, do. Okay, what were we doing? I forgot. Uh, we set this. We set that up. Oh yeah, so now when we, you go to the home page, it's gonna be like, go to your to-dos, and then you get to the to-dos, and then you have it, or it should say go to your to-dos, go to your to-do list. Really? Okay, I will. I'll stretch it to an hour. So at 4.30, we're done. Oh my goodness, that's, that's not too bad, actually. I haven't been streaming for that long. Okay. So, do do do. I actually, if I'm gonna make it an hour, I have to go use the restroom real quick. I was gonna tough it out for you guys. Can you believe that? Wait, you can't. Salvin, I didn't do it yet though. You should wait until after I do it and then you should do it. But no, that's awesome. Salvin. That, you're so cool. Woohoo, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna, so this won't, this won't count. I'm taking a brief, brief, <laughs> a brief break. Ooh, Pleb, thank you for the subscription. I'll be right back, guys. I guess I have to mute both. Hello, okay, that one's that one. Hey, can you guys hear me? 
Are we good? But you couldn't hear me before that, right? I was just trying to test if I mute the um, one of the sound sources. Okay, cool. So I just want to make sure like if I'm like doing jumping jacks in the background or whatever, you guys aren't hearing it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go here. Okay, so we've got this basic, these basic to-do list going. If we go to the, that's fine. Uh, that should probably go to the homepage homepage. Okay, let's fix that. So we got to go into the layout and yeah, this should always link there. I think it should just always link there. Okay, so let's refresh this. Okay, boom. So we got that. Then go to your to-do list. <coughs> and we need a heading for this. So, um, yeah, let's make it have a little bit more space, I guess. What is causing the space on the top here? I think it's probably this nav box up here. So we'll go to site nav. No, it's the page. It's the page itself. Okay, so let's go to page. And we're gonna add some more padding at the top. Just maybe three. Okay, and then we're gonna add a heading. Uh, sorry, the heading needs to be um, 28 pixels. And the margin, margin bottom of 24 pixels. And a font weight of bold. I think it already is bold, but we're just going to restate it. Um, and then on the index page, we need to add that page heading at the top. And we're going to say uh, to-do list. OK, nice. Refresh. Nice. Looks good. And now the to-do list. We're going to go into that SAS file. And the margin bottom on that is going to be uh, 24px. OK, cool. So let's refresh this. Nice. Let's go into, I don't know why this to-do list is called go to the moon. It should be called something like, um, uh, like work like personal to-dos or work to-dos or we had another one long-term long-term to-dos is long-term one word I'm pretty sure it is long dash term okay so we'll say long-term to-dos <clears throat> okay, nice, nice, nice. Now we'll go into personal to do's. And we need to style this page. Okay, so before we do that, let's just. Um, I don't know, we'll just say improvements. I don't know how to sum up all of that. So just say improvements and let's style this page. Okay, so we need to style it like this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to our to-do list page and we're going to add a heading up the top, uh, right like that. And it's going to say to-dos. Okay, refresh. Um, and I think the go back should just be a regular link, not a button. Uh, hey, Yosef Habari, how's it going? Habri, how's it going? Okay, so now we've got the link to go back. And actually, you know what I want? I want a uh, text link for this. And...
Actually, we could put it in colors. And let's just say like text blue. No, 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 we don't want it just in colors. We want it to be a link. Um, okay, so we're gonna create another, <laughs> another little helper library called links, I guess. Do we really need one? Probably add it to base or buttons. Nah, it doesn't really fit there. Uh, we could just create like a general kind of like utilities. I like that. I'll say like, nah, I don't know. We'll do links, whatever. <laughs> whatever, links.sass. And in here, um, lmnlp. So we're gonna do links. In helpers, we've got links. So we're gonna do text link. And then we're gonna do color. And we're gonna grab this color. And then we're gonna say on hover, we're gonna do text decoration, none. Okay, so pretty simple. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. I'm gonna refresh this page. Nice, okay. Oh. Jeez. So now we need another one, <laughs> another helper, which is going to be like, or no, we have a spacing one already, right? So spacing is for margin, uh, but we need one for display. Ay, ay, ay. There's too many helpers for like a beginner project, you know, but whatever, we'll do it for now. So for display, uh, let's create another thing up here that's like helpers. So buttons are components, slash are components. Put links up here. Page is fine here. Site nav is kind of a component. Text field. I don't know, it's so, it's so uh, hard to tell the difference between helpers and components. I don't know, uh, that's fine. We'll just keep them all under components. But then we, we do want a helpers one because um, we wanna have one that is for display. And in display, we're just gonna have block, display, block. Okay, so now we can add display block to our text link. And we can have a margin bottom on it equal to two. <clears throat> okay, we'll save that and we'll refresh. Oh, that didn't work. You are indeed correct. Um, yeah, it's weird how it like resets it every time. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you for the uh, for the tip. I always forget to do that. Um, okay, so text link, display block, and margin bottom. Oh, it's not going to work with margin bottom too because I forgot it's exact uh, pixels. Okay, boom. So now we've got it. Um, so now for the to-dos, uh, let's see. So now we're gonna have this to-do. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so for to-dos, we're gonna do margin, bottom, and I think believe it's 20 pixels. And then for each to-do, we're gonna do, um, Okay, so actually this is where it gets a little bit difficult because we're gonna have multiple areas inside of here. <clears throat> so we're gonna do div, div. Okay, so we'll say like uh, class, to do's, uh, to do checkbox area. And then we're gonna put a checkbox in here. 
And we're just gonna be input type, I think it's checkbox, right? Um, and I don't need to close that. Input type checkbox, and we'll do value, I'll we'll put a special remake tag on there. Um, ice cream codes, you're off work and heading home. Have a good day, uh, ice cream codes. I hope you have a really nice weekend too, if I don't see you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, um, thank you for stopping by today. Uh, it was really nice hanging out. Um, okay, so we need a name and a value here. Skinny Seahorse, how are you doing? Um, so for name, we're gonna say, like is complete. Um, and for the value, we're gonna say like true. I think this will work. Uh, but we need to have the key up here, or right here. So we're gonna need to say like is complete. And we'll say to do is complete. Okay. So that, that might work. And then for this one, we're gonna have a class of to do's underscore to do uh, text, I guess. <clears throat> and then in here, we're gonna have to do dot text. Um, and actually, we already have that on the top level, so we don't need to put that down here. We just need to watch this one and insert it in here. Oh yeah, but we need we do need to render it in here uh, when it the page first loads. Okay, so we've got that. Um, so now for the to do item, we want to do a display flex, so it displays next to each other. For the checkbox area and the to do text. Okay, so to do checkbox area and text. Okay, so checkbox area is going to be um, a square. It's going to be a height and width of 42 pixels. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So we'll do 42 pixels and width 42 pixels. Um, and we'll do a, yeah, Sullivan is being wicked generous today. Uh, and we're gonna do a fill here. And in order to center the checkbox, um, I think we're gonna do a display flex on here. Display flex and then align items center and justify content center. <coughs> um, okay, and then let's see. So what kind of to do? So for the to do text, we're gonna do a background color of this. And let's see, what did we use for to-do list for the padding? We use this. So let's try this the same year. And let's look at what, were, what are the other ones? So display flex, margin bottom, uh, Welcome to all the new people. <laughs> That's nice. Um, okay, so I don't think we need the text recreation none, and we don't need cursor, or we should have cursor pointer on this, I guess. Um, it's nice that, that you want to see me stream uh, longer. I will admit that. Um, and we're going to have a hover color, I guess. So we'll say hover, and let's look up this color on open color. 
and we'll just go with, like two darker maybe. Oops. So we'll do background color. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. Uh, hey Lucas482, how's it going? Okay, nice. Now there's a problem here because we're not stretching to the maximum width. So for each to do, we are stretching, but then we're not allowing the to do text to grow. So here we need to say flex grow is one. We could just use the regular flex property. So we have a grow and then shrink and then the last thing, which is like, um, I forget what it's called, flex basis. And we'll just set that to auto. Okay, refresh this. Boom. <clears throat> so now this looks a little weird. Uh, that it looks like the same as the rest of the to do when you hover over it. Um, let's see. So first of all, I want to make maybe this the color of the text here like darker. One, two, three, refresh. I don't know. That's kind of fine. I guess I'm kind of okay with that. Um, we also wanted to align this to the right, which I forgot about. Um, is there an easy way to align something to the right in CSS without using float or flexbox? Um, I think there's not, right? So let's do, let's go into our display helpers and we're gonna do flex, display, uh, flex, and then, yeah, I th I'm pretty sure those are the easiest ways. And then we're gonna do justify content. Uh, no, wait, what am I doing? Um, Oof. Uh, yeah, I guess we can. So let's look up Flexbox. This will give us the CSS Tricks cheat sheet, which is amazing. Yeah, th no, that wouldn't be very clean. I mean, it would be okay. I mean, it wouldn't, that's not like the worst thing. But then you'd have to have a, a parent container with position relative anyways. Um, so we'll do Flex and. Okay, so we'll do justify content, flex end, and now what we can do is in our to-do list, we have this button, we're gonna wrap this with a div, and we're gonna do a class of flex and just justify content, flex end. And now that should align it to the uh, right. I think. Okay, let's try that. Where did I put this? This is in the to do. Oh, it's not. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we do want it there, but we also want it here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, one, two, three, refresh, boom, got that. Go in here, boom, got that on the right. Okay, so now with this hello text, let's make this a little darker. So let's do this. Maybe this will work, who knows. To do text color. I think it's gonna look better than black. Uh, it needs to be a little bit brighter. Orange just always needs to be a little bit brighter. It's like a very demanding color. It's like, um, like yellow. Yellow and orange just like really don't look good when they're dark. Green too. Um, they're like more sensitive to that, I think. Okay, so we'll save that. Refresh. Oops, I don't know what happened there. 
Um, yeah, still maybe a little bit brighter. Okay. And we're gonna, gonna refresh this. Um, and now to edit this, you're gonna click it, but I really don't like how this looks. Um, so maybe, uh, we, so we could just like add a border to it or something. No, that's not gonna look good either. It just looks weird like this, you know? We could make it really dark. We could try like this. Let's try this. Uh, so when you hover over it, you're gonna get this and you're gonna get a color of white. Okay, so let's try that. Nope, that is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, yeah, don't look, don't look. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, what, what would make this look uh, editable? Uh, ed edit editable, right? If you hover over this, I feel like if the shade just goes up one, right? So if we, maybe we just go here. Ooh, awesome. Leo 10 Kara, thank you so much. Yeah, we could make it lighter too. That's a good point. That's decent. I like that. I like that a lot better than it was. It was big. Your alert is not showing properly. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It got out of control. Maybe. Yeah, it did. How does that happen? Okay, is there any way to center this? There's not, right? I just kind of have to play it by ear. Okay, cool. Okay, so that looks decent. Uh, shoot. Oh, you can? You can... I don't know if... I don't know if I'm right clicking on it or not. Okay, let's try it. Ooh, nice, it worked. Good job, thank you. That's a good tip. Okay, so now we have the to do's. Okay, yeah, so first thing first, we gotta make the to do text editable, not the other thing. So we're gonna put the editable area on that. Um, so we'll do that, and that, and that. Okay, let's refresh. Now when I, cl oh man, what hap what's happening here? Oh, I put I literally put it on the checkbox area. <laughs> okay, so we'll put it here. Uh, yep, we don't need that to be on the separate line. Okay, so we'll save that. One, two, three, refresh. Okay, so what is happening? Okay, refresh. Okay, good. That was just a refresh. Okay, so now when I click this, it's not. Um, it's not, uh, whatever, it's not doing something. And if I click this, it's editable, and you should be able to remove it too. And you can add it to do, and you can go back to the first page. Okay, let's commit this, commit what we have so far. So, working on the to-do list. Yeah, it's not bad, right? Um, I think the, the width could be a little bit smaller, though. Let's go to the page. Maybe go down to, like, I think 480. 
be better. One, two, three, refresh. Yeah, that's like more of a, yeah, this, I think this works a little bit better. Um, okay, so now we can edit it. We can go in here, go in here. Now we have to be able to mark this as checked. So this is a slight problem because I forget how to do this. Um, also, it's not going to save by default because Remake is built for editing stuff inside of popovers. It's not built for editing stuff on the page. It does support it, but it's not it's not great at it. But it can it can do it. So let's let's look at Remake a little bit and see how we can do this currently because this is something I've been meaning to fix, meaning to think about. So we have this click to save. Okay. So this is an attribute that we're going to need. And then we also have the input element. <clears throat> so for this, it's going to find the, the nearest one and it's going to uh, get it based on the name. OK, so maybe this will work as I expected to. So let's look inside of the page and we're going to go into to do's and the first to do. So this is complete thing should turn to true. Boom. Nice. So it turns to true or it gets turned off and it, it doesn't have anything in it. Okay, so perfect. So now we just have to have a click to save. So the, the unfortunate part about this, and it's actually super un unfortunate, is that it's not accessible. Um, so, um, you know, if I have this click to save here, and, uh, you know, you're navigating this page with a mouse, um, and you do a spacebar, it's going to set this to true, but it's not going to save the page, right? So when we, re we refresh, it's not saved. But if I click it, regularly uh, maybe it doesn't save then either um, let's make sure this page is working in general yep okay so I can add a new to-do actually this makes me think I want to be able to I want to have some uh, margin bottom so for 14 px on each to-do margin bottom 14 px Let's refresh this. Why, why is that happening? That's super weird. Whenever I change the SAS, right, and I save, sometimes it refreshes the page and sends me back to like the front page. It's very weird. Uh, did I click on something? I don't know what's up with that. Okay, anyways, <laughs> we'll ignore that for now. Um, what was I trying to figure out? Oh yeah. So this has click to save on it. <clears throat> Black magic? What? What's that? Are you saying that the framework is? Oh, are you new to web development? Are you curious about, about learning uh, web development? Oh, Salvin. Okay, have fun. Uh, I'm on for another half an hour, thanks to you. <laughs> no, thanks a lot for, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, see you later, Salvin. Have a great day and a great weekend. I hope I see you tomorrow, though. Okay, so you only made one website, you're mostly doing game development. I, I will, I'll have fun. Um, you're mostly doing game development, that's cool. What are you using for game development? Awesome, thank you, Salvin. I really appreciate the support. Um, <clears throat> C-sharp, that's cool, I don't know, I don't know uh, C-sharp. I feel like that's pretty close to the language that I, uh, is it? No, no, never mind. I'm not going to say anything that sounds really super stupid. Um, 
But that's awesome. C sharp. That's a hard language, I think. Um, so we need to see if this click to save is firing a save event. So it looks like it's not. Because we'd be getting an XHR request in here. <coughs> um, what kind of game are you building? Can you show us? Can you show us like an early preview, maybe, or or just describe the game? Yeah, I've heard of Own Cloud a little bit. You know what I want to do? I want to build um, a remake app using um, what do you call that platform that lets you deploy an app for free? Glitch. I think it's called Glitch, right? I want to build a remake app using that. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, it's a really cool platform. You basically they let you have like a whole server environment, uh, and so you can make like a remake. Uh, sorry, a, a React app or a Vue app or whatever, as long as you're using like a flat file database. Um, and then you can just like have your own custom subdomain there. Uh, it's by the same people that made uh, Trello. So in my what I think happened is they started Trello, they got it really popular, they sold it to Atlassian, and then part of the team split off to start uh, Glitch. Um, Android says they also have to run, but great stream, also hope to share my project with you soon. Have a great stream. Awesome, thank you a lot, Android, for stopping by, and I hope to hear about your project soon. Uh, maybe tomorrow? Or maybe at least I'll see, we'll see you tomorrow? Um, have, a, have a great day either way, and a great weekend. And uh, it was, yeah, definitely a fun stream. Um, <clears throat> okay, so awesome. See y'all. Or see you. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. How can I be like this out of it after only like a few hours of streaming? Okay, so it's not firing the save request. So let's look in here again. Um, So we want the click to save. So if it has this, get this element, get attribute. Oh, it has to have, it has to be set to closest. Oh my goodness. What a weird thing. No, it kind of makes sense. Okay, so it has to say closest. So that means it's gonna save to the closest uh, save attribute. This is kind of a weird thing, but whatever. Um, So uh, Sed Sedson1 says, been working on a project the last few days, started as a horror game, but now it ended up as some sort of puzzle game. That's awesome. I love I love puzzle games. You know what, I, I just downloaded one. I think that's about cooking or something. It's like, I don't know, you're on a ship and you're cooking. I think it's super popular. Uh, Sullivan recommended it to me actually. Um, okay, so now we're saving it. If we refresh, this is gonna be checked again. Because we have to, of course, set checked equal to... Oh man, I don't know how to do this. Handlebars checked. Uh, checkbox, checkbox. Can you tell us anything more about it? Like what kind of puzzles you're solving? Or um, I don't know, like what it's going to be like to play? Like is it similar to any games that are out there? <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Handlebars, checkbox, checked. Okay, I don't know, I guess we can try this. Uh, let's do this. One, two, three. Boom, we got it. 
Uh, you don't know really, as it's just a prototype for you to learn more. That's awesome though. I, uh, I have a lot of respect for uh, game developers. I want to someday branch out into being a, a game developer. Um, maybe like doing like VR stuff. I think if I like, yeah, I think I would really like to do like VR development. Okay, so now the tech box is working. Um, it's a little hacky. That's awesome. Let's check out Flipcoder's engine. QOR, 3D OpenGL game engine, C++ with Python scripting. This looks cool. Wow. This must have been so much fucking work. Oh my goodness. I hope you're using like a lot of third party libraries. Yeah, this is insane. Oh, whoa. You got featured on the official GitHub blog? Whoa, that's awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Only for Windows? Closed. Done with that. No, I'm just kidding. That looks really cool. That looks awesome. Um, no, I understand. Uh, honestly, there's no point in making a game that, that is for anything but Windows, especially when you're first starting out, because most gamers are PC gamers. Like, how often do you hear, oh yeah, I'm a Mac gamer. Like, seriously, it doesn't happen. Um, it's cool if you can. That's awesome. That's awesome you made it pla cross-platform. <coughs> nice. That's really cool. Okay, so these checkboxes are working, um, but I feel like what I want really is in here where we have this input, I feel like I want to have an option <laughs> nice. Um, that saves this. Yeah, that sounds like a crazy amount of work. Um, so I think what I want is something like... So like save when change. Or, or trigger save um, on change or something. I don't know, this is really weird syntax. But instead of like this click to save thing, I would, would prefer that. That's awesome. What is Couch Synth about? Can you tell us about it? Um, okay, so I think this feels pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine for now. Um, it's a little weird, but that's okay. <clears throat> so, I believe when you when we save something, so call save function, 
call save function. This is going to call uh, the watch functions, I believe. It might not. Call save function, save function. I guess it maybe it doesn't. Okay, so then how does sync work? So sync, oh, this is the one that's gonna, yeah, of course, this is the one. This is the crazy one. It's not that crazy though. So let's see, sync. Oh, trigger sync and save. Okay, sync data between elements. Um, so you're gonna get the data, then we're gonna sync it to the new element. Sync to input keys. Call after save callbacks, okay. Oh man, where do I save it? Save things. Should trigger save. Um, Sync data between elements. Okay, so wait, here, call after save callbacks. Okay, so it must be in here. After save callbacks, what, what are these? After sync, after sync callbacks. <coughs> um, So where am I saving? Trigger sync and save. Sync data between elements. I mean, it must be in here. Full data object, get data. Okay, we're getting the data. We're looping through it. We're adding it. Sync to location or output key. This might be it. Sync to input keys. Call watch functions. I feel like there should be some documentation on this page. Um, okay, so sync data between elements. Let's add some documentation to this. So one, get the data. Two, loop through it. Keys. Three. Um, Dash case came in. Sync location and output keys. I have So three is going to be like sync data from keys into target element. Uh, four is going to be call watch functions on target element. Um, Oh, 
tiny element. Okay. Whew. Functions inside uh, where the data was synced into. Um, all right, element looking through ancestors. Okay. So that uh, trigger <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, so sync data between elements. So it has to be this one. Copy data from the data sync element back toward the source element and I just don't know how, where the save is happening. So somewhere I need to say oh, okay here it is. So after sync Okay, so enable save attribute. So, and then I'm getting after sync from sync data. Uh, this is so confusing. After sync. Okay, 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 okay. So, this is how, okay. So, this, um, yeah, let's document this. Uh, this is fed a save callback function when um, input JS is initialized. Um, okay, and then so then the after sync is going to be called. What does sync to input keys do? Okay. Um, syncs data into input elements if they're inside 
で element now we think gender sex uh the after sync um callbacks are called including um we'll say down here uh this includes a save function defined when uh, remake is initialized. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so now that we know that, um, okay. So now if we want to enable this, we're going to have input element event listener. And we're going to say, so we want to call the watch functions before. Okay, so, so let's go into watch helpers. <coughs> and <coughs> call watch functions oh my goodness where is this coming from it's coming from sync data oh my goodness okay call watch functions um And this isn't asynchronous, so we're fine with that. So now we just have to do uh, the save. Man, this took me way too long to understand. Um, so, this one. Um, and you know what? I'm going to get rid of this. Because it's pointless. I never used anything else other than that, so that's fine. Um, I don't know. We'll leave it for now. I actually don't want to like support this in the long term, so whatever. Okay, so let's go here, and then we're gonna do this, and we're gonna call it on. Event current target. Okay. So call save function, now we just need to know where this comes from. So it's on save, cool. Um, so now we're going to save every time, but we don't actually want to save every time. So we want to say if. Um, yeah, trigger save on change. So we're going to say um, if event current target um, matches uh, what do we want data i equals 
triggers it. Okay. So let's search for this on the page. One, two, three, refresh. Document query selector. Oh. Nice. We got the both inputs that we were expecting to get. Um, nice. Okay. I feel like that's the easiest way of doing it because we could also get this. I guess we know it's there. Okay, let's do that. So get attribute. Do we get this attribute anywhere else? No. Okay, so we're gonna get the attribute. <coughs> and we're gonna see if that's equal to this. And that could be, so just to make sure, let's just like try getting the attribute this. Yeah, that'll just give the null, so that's fine. Okay, cool. So let's refresh. And now... Now this should work, I think. Boom. It's triggering save. And now if we remove this, from here, and we refresh, this shouldn't trigger a save. Nice. <coughs> That's awesome. That solves a lot of problems right there. I don't know about this <coughs> syntax, but that's fine. That's fine for now. Um, so we'll say added new power to data uh, input attributes uh, trigger save on change um, and we'll say also documented sync data.js okay let's push that out um, cool so now we have the ability to check off <laughs> no we don't what the heck? Okay, so I think if we add a new to-do and I check this, it is going to save it. But now I can't uncheck them. Oh, I get it. I kind of get it. I think maybe it's, um, it's saving before... Before it's unchecked? I don't even know. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's see. So console... Uh, wait. Okay, wait. Let's see. Okay, so console. Let's console log. This is weird to me. Let's get the um, new value. Okay, and let's refresh. So we got true, true. Okay, that's very weird. To do's, to do.
Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, no, but that shouldn't be affecting it. So, okay, let's see. Um, so let's see uh, here. So uh, we'll say like before save, and we just we want to check to see. Um, Flip, Cobra, Flip Coder, thank you so much for stopping by today. Uh, sorry, towards the end of the cast, it got a little boring. But um, thank you for talking with uh, people and sharing your projects. Uh, I'm sure everyone really appreciates that. And I hope to see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, have a great, great night. Um, so I need to check to see if the new uh, value is set. So we have attribute name. I mean, it should be set right here. So if we're triggering the save here, it should already be there. Let's let's see. Um, output element get attribute attribute name. Uh, as soon as I fix this bug, by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream. But it was a lot of fun. Um, okay, so this is before save. True, 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 true. Okay. sure how this works. <laughs> oh wait. Oh no. I'm supposed to be using this one. Oh no, this is the worst. Radio and select, and then this is for checkbox. I don't know why this isn't namespace. Um. But like, why isn't is just limited to text elements? That's fine, though. Uh, okay, so let's save this. <laughs> we'll refresh. Make sure it's not being called anymore. Okay, it's not being called anymore. Uh, which means, yeah, it's not saving anymore. Okay, it's impressive that it was working, even though it's only meant to be used with... Um, but we'll leave this here because... Uh, yeah, we do want to keep that around. Okay, so now we want the same thing here. So for choices, after we set the value, we're going to say if event current target get attribute data i is set to trigger, then we're going to save it. That makes sense. Same thing here. Same thing here. Um, and save thing here. Okay, so important this is this is not for select. This is only for text inputs, not radio select or checkboxes. That's important to know. <laughs> Wouldn't have spent so much time over there. Okay, so we've got this trigger on, on change, and then we're going to call the save function here. 
and we're getting the name, the key name from there, and if it's checked, we're gonna set the value. If not, we're not. Uh, okay, cool. So this should work. Let's try this again. We're gonna uncheck this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, because we don't have this yep, defined in here yet. Okay, so let's paste that in there and refresh. Okay, now let's look at the network to make sure the save is being called. Okay, so we have it should have no, yes, and no. Boom, it's done, it works, it works, I'm so excited. Okay, so now we've got it working on change, right? So there's some click events but up there which are less accessible, but now we have change for the radio buttons and change events for the checkboxes, which means that even if you edit these uh, with spacebar, it should still trigger the save, and if we refresh, boom, it's saved. Ooh, that's so exciting. Okay, so uh, we'll say like, go to the moon, uh, get, oh man, now that's not say, oh no. Oh no, I ruined everything. But what just happened? Oh, wait, wait, I bet this is um, a simple thing. Uh, yep, okay, this is just not syncing with the um, data. Okay, so I forgot as usual. <laughs> I do this all the time. I forget. I forgot to add a sync here. Yeah. Okay. So we ha we're syncing with name, but not text. We needed to set sync with text. Okay. Boom. So we got go to the moon. We're gonna say get cheese, and then we're gonna say fly home. Okay. Refresh. Boom. It works. We can go back. We can go into work to dos. We can add some to-dos, um, go to the nearby cave, uh, slay the monster, go back, long-term to-dos, um, save the princess in the castle. Maybe that's too uh, stereotypical. Um, save the world from evil. Sure, long term to do. Okay, boom. And now, yep, all these are working, I think. I'm really glad we got that working. That's exciting. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we we did, I think, most of my to do's for the stream today. We um, did the styles, we did the welcome page. Right, we can see that here. That was a very simple welcome page, but whatever. Um, add to-do list page. Adding to-do list, working, adding, removing, editing. We didn't actually test removing. Uh, sure, let's test it. Refresh, okay. We'll add it back in. Oh no, what happened to the edit button? Oh man. Why didn't the edit button show up when we first added it? That was a bug. I want to fix that bug. Okay, so um, let's say uh, added option to other. Oh, hey, thanks now, Zolo. Thanks for. Uh, uh, Thanks for following, I really appreciate it. Um, okay, cool, so there's a bug here. When we add a new to-do list, wait, we do, we do have that a button. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I don't know, whatever, it was, <laughs> it's not showing up. Okay, I don't know, maybe it was just my eyes. <laughs> it's weird. That stinks. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully I run into it again and then I can fix it and reproduce it somehow. Um, what are long-term plans? I have an epic party. Uh, we'll say Halloween party. Okay, cool. So go back. Um, going through our to-dos again. 
we got the to do's working, adding to do's, removing to do's, and editing to do's. Edit, change name, save. Okay. Um, edit, change name. Ooh. You're right. Thank you. I really, whoa, I super appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, so is it just not there? What happened to it? That's, that's super weird. Uh, oh, look at this. It doesn't have any content in it. It got overwritten. Wait. Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. I know exactly what's happening. So in our to-do list, we have this, uh, we have this watch. Where is it? No, it's not a to-do list. It's in the um, index page. So we have this, uh, oh no, <laughs> it's in the partial. Okay, well, eventually we'll get it, right? So we have this watch, uh, we're watching this key and then we're setting the inner text. But we set the inner text for the entire anchor tag, whereas we should be putting this down here on the span. Okay, cool. So now, refresh. Uh, now if we, we'll delete this. Now if we add a new one, and we edit it, it only edits the, that span, right? Because now we've attached that, that watcher just to that span. And that's why it's nice to have the, the watcher keys because it doesn't just have to be at the top level where you're storing the data and you can put them anywhere on the page um, or anywhere inside the page, anywhere inside the data. I don't know, whatever. Okay, nice, so that's working. Uh, we fixed a bug, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you so much for helping. Uh, okay, so fix bug with editing to do lists. Okay, so we're gonna push this up and let's um, let's run a couple commands right before we finish this. So this is a little bit dangerous, but whatever. We're gonna do update remake and then if we go into our command line tool, we should see all of our updates. So these are all the updates we made today. We did that to the underlying framework. Uh, did that, we did that, we did that. Yep, these are all pretty standard. So now when someone uses the Remake app to generate a new project, um, updates to to-dos and underlying uh, front end framework, or we'll say, and remake framework. Awesome. So we'll push those out, and I feel like that's deserving of kind of a minor change, right? So we're gonna do npm, or sorry, we gotta go into remake, npm version minor, and npm mostly because we did break things. And then we're gonna do an npm publish. Gonna, uh, do that. And now, uh, we should have the new version published. 1.1. 1.1 of remake is out now. You guys should go get it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so it used to be 1.0.1 and now it is 1.1. Awesome. Okay, cool. So if you guys want to try this out and play around with it uh, and see what the, what the kind of app that I've been playing, that I've been building today is like to, to build uh, using Remake, um, I would recommend running these two commands, npm install, um, and remake create, and then you'll have your own new to-dos app and you can play around with it. Uh, until next time, oh, and I should actually, my bad, I should do another update. This can be a minor change um, to the framework 
I should remove this not ready yet because it is ready. Uh, so let's update the readme. npm version patch uh, and npm publish. There we go. Version 1.1.1. That, that has to be lucky in some way, right? Um, cool. So now we got rid of that message. Awesome, awesome. And we'll push that in GitHub too. Okay, guys, I will be on tomorrow around noon if you want to follow around with more remake, remake fun or just talk in the chat and uh, work and watch. Um, Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for all the new viewers, all the new chatters, all the new um, subscribers. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will talk to you all tomorrow around noon, maybe, maybe 1 p.m. Uh, have a good night. Bye.